Basketball was my first love, man, before anything. I still love the game now, but I just love it differently. I am who I am today because of the game. It molded my mental, my physical, my manhood, but the culture is who I am too. Let's get straight to it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Straight Shooters Podcast. This podcast series is focusing on delivering raw, authentic, unfiltered perspectives on the most contentious topics surrounding the game of basketball and other sports as well. Um, We're also going to merge the bridge with uh, cultural topics such as politics, uh, social justices, uh, social media, current events, fashion, music, life. Etc. We want to make sure to on this podcast series to give you guys a well-rounded uh, perception of what we what we how we feel and, and the gems that we drop. So that it's not just primarily sports and primarily basketball, but you get a lot of gems, you know, out of life or whatever other avenues you guys you know are feeding from. Uh, so it's a well-rounded situation that you guys can benefit from. Uh, before we get any deeper, I want to shout out Apex Soul. For allowing us to use this dope space to create dope vibes. Um, this is at the back in the day location uh, in Marietta at off Bells Ferry Road. I am a loyal, loyal customer. I've been rocking with them for I say about two and a half, three years since I've known about them. Been locked in ever since. If you guys need some drip, if you need anything, shout out to back in the day, shout out to Apex Soul. And if y'all need something, just come. Just pull up. If you've been here already, you know what to expect. Uh, But anyways, outside of that, uh, this is a very, very special episode. One, because it's not only the first episode to start a long journey and adventure, a long ride. Um, This is a good friend of mine. This is someone I call family. And not only just that, this is someone that he don't even know this. And I'm saying this on camera. Mm. Like, you know, know, he's going to be like, hmm, you know what I mean? But... It was way back in the day when when I used to, you know what I mean, play at a high level, at the highest level I could possibly play at, trying to get exposure to play at the next level. Um, I, I really, I'm a, I'm a huge observer. And guys who really lock in, I mean, I've never seen a guy, I've seen a handful. And those guys who I'm, who I'm relying, referring to uh, on that handful are legends. And he's in that category. Not only in Georgia is he a legend to me, but he's renowned nationally internationally, played collegially and professionally at a high level, pro, pro guy. Um, You know, and I'm saying that not just because he's my bro, because I've seen the work he's put in. I've seen what the work gets him. I've seen even outside of a basketball perspective, even though it's correlated to basketball, the type of character he carries off the court and and the type of uh, momentum and, and attention that's drawn to just genuine vibes and giving back to your roots, to your foundation. Um, McDonald's All-American, Jordan Brand Classic All-American. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get right to it. John Kendrick. Ah, ah, ah. It's my boy. You already know. This is real fam shit right here. We on filter with it. Um, you know, so for the world that don't know you, uh, the people out here that don't know you, in a nutshell, just give them... A, a little bit about you, what you about, what you've accomplished, what you've done, and where you at in the season of life, man. Uh, yeah, like you said, Jalon Kendrick. I uh, grew up in College Park, Georgia. Um, shout out to my mom and dad, Denise and Lonnie Kendrick. Solid people. Solid. Business standards. Business standards. <laughs> um, you know, right now I'm just in the season of life, just working on myself. Nice. Just, you know, constantly pushing and, 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 you know, understanding the balance of life, mm. the good and the bad. You know, so, you know, search for peace and joy, and uh, you know, make sure that I'm surrounded by people that 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 are on that same wave mm-hmm. to 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 really search for peace and joy. And by doing that, I've seen um, success, and uh, I've seen you know God, uh, you know, surround me 
with really good people. You know, so it's a it's a it's a season to eat. It's, you know what I mean? It's a, you know what I mean? Like you know, never never want to overeat, but it's it's definitely a season to eat and eat good. Eat good with your boys and and, and whoever else. So you know what I mean? So it's it's a great season. Definitely, definitely. Um, so let's touch on your story, right? And and you know, you you can you can really dig as deep as you want to, and we'll get we'll get go from there. You know, I just you know feed off of you, so you can start as young as you know. You first touching the basketball, or you can give people the story of when you when you were already on a high level, um, or or just the whole just the whole you know in a nutshell situation. Let yeah. Um. Let's see. I first touched the basketball. I'm not sure how old I was. Maybe three. Maybe four. Who knows? Um. But my dad had me kind of surrounded by the game. Uh, I would go to a lot of his church league games and adult league games and watch him play. Um. I don't think I was very interested in it. I used to do things on the sidelines. I remember one of my uh, initial games playing basketball. I had really long hair, uh, loved women, I think, um, at, a, at a high caliber at a young age. And so when I got subbed in the game, uh, my dad's looking up and down the floor. He's like, yo, where, where's JK? I was in the, in the stands with the cheerleaders. <laughs> Chilling, you know what I'm saying? Like smooth chilling. Yeah, I was chilling. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the stands with cheerleaders. You know what I'm saying? Locked in, kicking, kicking back, feet up. No, Long hair, chilling. You know what I mean? So it was, it was, it was real interesting. And um, you know, I, I just, I just stayed locked in. I was lucky enough and blessed enough to have a father that, um, you know, that just believed in in that that constant grind. Mm, that's big. Like consistency and discipline. And uh, you know, when you're younger, you, you you don't you don't understand the value of consistency and, di- and discipline. Mm. So like sometimes you spend your your teenage years like combating that, or like your early you know your early twenties combating that because you think that you know he was tough on you out of hate hatred or because he didn't love you enough, mm. but it was actually the opposite. Tough love. And like it was tough love, but but it was also even tougher because it's like if you're combative with him, he knows what you're going through. He knows that you think that. He hates you, mm-hmm. and he lets you get it out. Right, because he's solid. He can take that. He can take. He can take the not anger that you. Can take that. Yeah, not everybody can take it. But like when you when you come from like my dad's cut from a cloth. That's that's all. You know what I mean? That, that you to can't Pops cut. Real one. That's you know what I mean? Like you're birthed with that type of cloth. That's a fact. Because certain cloth is so strong, it's uncuttable. That's a fact. Like my boy Ray J said, it's unbreakable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it broke. No, that's no. not like my pops. My pops is unbreakable in real life. So, um, he's cut from that cloth, and man, we 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 be outside. And it's crazy. It takes thirty minutes a day, mm. oh, maybe even less. Maybe you know a shade more. We used to go outside thirty minutes, man. You know, do a little running, a little ball handling drills here and there. You know, work on like you know, you know, going fast, change of pace, things of that sort. That I, you know, thirty minutes. My dad come out from a long day of work. We'd go outside for thirty minutes, and um, over time, I seen it um, mature into. <clears throat> something special. Mm. And I started to see myself separating from the other guys and separating right. my separating myself from the pack. What and, year was uh, that? What year do you feel like that separation started? Like when when do you feel like that that separation really took place? Was it was it middle school? Was it high school? I mean high school you were you were already that, but you still took a separate you still had that leap in high school. But when do you think it happened? So 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 at every level I, I viewed myself as 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 very as very solid. Yeah. Like a top guy. Agreed. Like a top five guy. No matter rec ball. For sure. Played against Ryan Harrow in rec ball. For he sure. was really good. Shout played out Harrow. At, yeah, shout out Harrow. Legend. He played at Welcome All Park, which was Burdett Park's rivals. Mm. Um, you know, so but my thing was I wasn't the fastest. So when you're younger, your values of basketball are different. For sure. Um, I wasn't the fastest. I didn't jump the highest. I didn't shoot the ball the best. I did nothing great. Right. I did everything solid, mm-hmm. and um, that type of basketball player isn't really valued until he gets a little older, Definitely. and then those solid things become good things or great things. You know what I mean? In in conjunction with one another. That's a fact. And um, you know, so I was always competitive. I I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't um, didn't enjoy losing. You never do. Yeah, I didn't enjoy losing. Since I've met you. You've been a competitor, not just yeah. on the court. I you're just a competitor, bro. Yeah, I'm just a competitor. <laughs> but I mean, the beauty about that is like, I'm a competitor that understands that if I lose, I don't mind giving someone their flowers. For sure. Credit. I don't mind like going like, okay, that person was the better man. I've never felt, I've, I've 
never felt that though. I've never played against somebody and said, "Oh shit, he's the better man." Really? And in my life. Really? Yeah, maybe I ain't played against enough people. I don't know. But to this point, I've never played against somebody and said, "Yo, he's the better he, man." That he that he won that matchup. Like he that. was the better man. That like game. he won the war. No, I've never said that in my okay, entire life. Okay, okay. Like you know what I mean? I've said to people like, "Yo, he could play." <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If he gets switched off of me, he looks impressive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? No, knock on anybody, but that's just the truth. That's the God honest truth. And, and and maybe that's my competitive edge as well. Cause that's a fact. you know, I um, but um yeah, so uh I don't know, it's hard to say when it actually clicked. I think it clicked for other people. Mm-hmm. It always clicked for me. I never thought that I was bad. I always was competitive, I always was a neighborhood guy that hooped and 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 got, you know, was off the porch and had fun, but you know, when it clicked for everybody else was like 11th grade. Yeah, 10th, 11th. 10th, like the 10th, 10th, Those 11th grade. Those years vital when you try to get offers and it's in it's crunch time. When it starts to matter a little Exposure bit. Exposure is key. Yeah. You mean, you're trying, to, you're trying to get, a, you got your future ahead of you. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. Really, it's, it's dog eat dog. It's dog eat dog. It's a whole different mentality. It's dog eat dog. And I was and I was fortunate enough to play against a lot of dogs or, or guys that had teeth at least. And... um. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Hey yo, he a dog, man. He crazy, man. Uh, oh man. But um, you know, um, because because I think that to me, and I could be wrong. A dog is to the eye of the beholder. A dog, a dog to me is a guy that doesn't mind. You know, whatever it takes to win. Both both ends of the floor, competitive. You know, somewhat of a leader. Um, somewhat is 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 a is an an, an aggressor. At times of need, mm. you know what I mean. Like um, I tell you all the time, like one, and I didn't play against him until later in life. But one of the uh, most competitive people that I enjoy playing with is um, is Glenn Rice Jr. Shout out to Glenn; he's a legend too at Georgia. Shout out, to um, and Rice we Jr. we play together quite some time, especially now. And like it's it's musical because I know one he he wants to win mm-hmm. by any means necessary. Hundred percent. He's going to play hard. He's going to play the right way. He's going to communicate. You know what I mean? Like, and he's going to compete. Like, I'm not here to just play. I'm right. here to win. I'm here to. I'm here to prove that I'm better than you. That's a fact. That's a fact. I don't want participation awards. Right. I don't want. You know what I mean? I, I'm. I'm cool on that. That's all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That 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 doesn't do it for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, like a guy like myself, like at, when I was younger and I was a youth, like I was like a, 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 a almost obsessive in that mindset, like. Bro, we lost the McDonald's All American game. They gave us a ring with diamonds in it. I seen it. I threw it away. No, you didn't. Because we lost, nigga. Why would I want a second place? place? Hey, hey, like, he you know what I'm saying? Why would I want a second place? Hey, he different for that one. That's crazy. He, that's like, a real competitor. But I mean, well, like, why didn't you keep it for for memorabilia exactly. purposes? Youthful. Right. So like, yeah, it's right, competitive. Right, right, but right, when right, you get right, older, right, you start right. understanding the balance of what competition is, and start mm-hmm. to understand like, yo, like, even though I am a competitor, mm-hmm. like, this is a keepsake that my grandkids can see and and value. And and hope you know what I mean, like really appreciating situations. I don't know, man. I threw that motherfucker somewhere in the woods. <laughs> I can't pinpoint, but that, I threw it. How how close was the game? Was it a competitive game? Was it one of those games where it's like, hey, don't foul this guy, don't foul that guy. Uh, if he has the open leg, so, showtime me. Like, so I'm gonna tell you what the McDonald's All American game is. Yes, they sir. they have they have a game that happens before that. Really? Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's unfilmed. Unfilmed for most. And it's almost it's a scrimmage. You know what I've seen the film on that. But Social it's but that that that's the one. That's the one that 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 a lot of scouts and agents like that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's the now one. you do your thing in there, right. and you shit your bed on TV. You still you still a little shaky. No, you still in in a oh, right place a, because that one is competitive. Right. That one is dog eat dog. Like the 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 game. Like you got to sub in, sub out. Certain people got to play certain minutes. Right. Then like at the last quarter or two, like it's free fall. It's like that thing. It's structured. Right. Because like it would look weird if you had a top twenty player and he sat for all but three minutes of the game just 100%. because he doesn't fit your style of play or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So um, who who stood out in that to you? If you if you can recall correctly, Kyrie Irving stood out. <laughs> yeah, he. I mean, no just question. very. You know, wizard no with question. the basketball. Um, Harrison Barnes did well, but he leaked out a lot. Really? A lot of fast break buckets. Um, <laughs> Kyrie, I think, earned a lot of buckets. Mm. You know what I mean? Like very personal buckets. Mm. Like coming at you, half court, bing, bing, bop, bop, in and out tween, excuse me, to the Baja. <laughs> 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 Mountain Dew Blast. He's Baja. 
<laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then he get up there and get real wiki on you in the air. He over here, over here. Yeah. Lay me. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, so they I had thought, NBA scouts now. I'm sure they did. I mean, at the time, like, was I aware or not aware? I don't know. Like, right. it was it was during the time, like, I, I didn't come from a, a, a basketball. I came from a basketball. I came from a dad that enjoyed basketball. He never played basketball after high school. Like, he didn't play in college. He didn't love it. No, he loved it. He loved it. But he didn't, like, play in college. Like, he didn't he didn't play pro anywhere. He you wasn't know? passionate about that. No, I just don't think a nigga was good enough. Okay. He's my pops. I mean, like, yeah, goon, but no, he ain't, sure, like... It was solid, no, guys. Sure, right, solid, solid, solid. Ain't no pro. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think so. I got to see the film on Are the guy. Are you the tallest out the fam? For, to my knowledge, yeah. To my knowledge, yeah. As far as siblings go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Them, them, they look. So, so, my brother look. So, how, how tall are your pops? About 6'3? Six, six, They're two? about 6'2. Six, Man, you 6'6? You 6'6, six, 6'7. Six. Six, 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 well, so, what made you want to be a point guard and a guard more than a big? So, that was my dad's decision, actually. Really? Yeah, my dad. My dad was like, just because you're tall now, don't mean you're gonna be tall forever. Mm -hmm. He's like, what well, if you don't grow? Because mm -hmm. that happens a lot, right? A lot. And so then my dad had an opportunity with my brother before me, mm. who grew to six one. Seven. So like he played like he played big and played wing, but his transition was a little more rocky because he didn't start off early enough to like just be like, okay, let me teach you how to be a point, navigate an offense, shoot, do all these things. Like he was more inside than he developed. Into an outside guy. Now, he mind you, my brother. Yeah, my brother is like uber athletic, though. Really? Yeah, my mom was. My mom like won the Junior Olympics type. Oh, she did. Yeah, and my brother she like. Yeah, and my brother is like. He has that that genetic. For sure. Forty inch vert. For sure. No step. Like six one well, he, track he, star. He, high school at? he went to Banneker. Oh, he went to Banneker. Shout yeah. out Banneker, man. Yeah, I used yeah. to play some tournaments at AU up there, man. I got some family that went there too. Shout out. Yeah, so sure. super athletic, um, defensive guy. Mm. Like once I could once I could get past him and score a bucket, everybody else in the world was in trouble. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It was it was that type of thing. So like my dad, you know, my dad was was uh inclined to a sense where he said, Man, you know, I got a son. He looks like he could be tall. So let me put him in a position to be great and if he in case he does not grow. Right. And so by him making that decision, um, he used to feed me little seeds too. Like I remember, I played um, AAU for the Atlanta Celtics one year when I was younger. Shout out Celtics! And my coach was a guy named Coach Jones. He was very traditional. If you're short, you're guard. If you're big, you're big. Very, very traditional. Old very old school. Yeah. And so one game he didn't show up to, and when he didn't show up to, I went crazy. <laughs> but I'm I'm off the rim. Boom, pushing the brakes. Getting busy. You know what I mean? S solid busy. I ain't wasn't wiggly. Right, right. But you're in between. Ah, to the Baja. Bing. You know what I'm saying? Leia, we probably not. Right. Behind the back. Ah, to the Baja. But I'm going busy. Mm. The guard sitting here doing this. I'm waving them off like I got it. So the next game, might might have had like a 30 piece or something. The next game, Coach Jones comes back. Mm. I'm sitting here. My dad's sitting here. Coach Jones walks up to me, taps me on the leg, goes, I heard about what you did last game. I'm back. That won't happen no more. He ain't say that. I mean, I know you're staying on business. I'm just saying that, like, in all, like, a coach told you that. My, with my dad that. sitting right there. Oh, Pops is ready. Pops so so he walks by. He walk, He keeps walking. <laughs> he keeps walking. Pops looks at me. He just stands there. Cause Pops is like, Pops taps me. He goes, Yo, what you going to do this game? Mm. When you get the rebound, the guard clap. I told him, wave him off. He said, "What if he sit you?" I said, "I sit." Mm. What if you don't play no more? I don't play. I know I can do it. And so I kept doing it, and people started to adapt. Like, oh, like this is in his game. This is him. He's capable of this. this. Is him. And if you want him to play, if you put him in, this is what he's gonna do. Right. If you don't want him to do it, you sit him. And it's period, and I think that's a, and I think that's a beautiful thing for young players to to understand that is that be who you are, regardless of the consequences that come with it. Big because if you start to adapt and try to be something that you aren't, you'll you'll find yourself in an abyss that you can't seem to get out of mm. because you're not being yourself. Mm. So you're coming down the court, and coach is telling you, "Hey man, pass the ball, pass the ball, don't shoot, don't shoot." When you know you're a 40, 50 percent shooter from the Tracy. Mm -hmm. And so now you're turning down shots to pass the ball. 
And then when you're supposed to take wide open shots, you're nervous because you're thinking about always constantly triple passing thinking, the ball. Not you're thinking, triple, triple thinking. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But if you just go, I'm a shooter. If you put me in a game, I'm going to shoot. If you do not want me to shoot the ball, you sit me. Absolutely. Be confident in that. Yeah. I know it's tough to do as a kid. I know it's tough to do in high school because you can reap some, some repercussions of sitting. Coaches and have so much power. Coaches have so much power. But what I'm saying is... <clears throat> Shoot, if, if if whatever you are, be that. Yeah. But be truthful to yourself now. Yeah. Like just cause your mom and dad think you're a shooter, look at look at the numbers. Definitely. If you're if you're little if you're a little baby, be real with the yourself. shooter is shooting 10% from three. No, okay. The coach coach has a point. Like be realistic. If coach is telling him to get off the off the ball for the betterment of a team and because it's for, for his for his um uh, his uh advancements, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But but a lot of times coaches are just not you know sometimes coaches are just haters, Facts. and coaches don't like that you can that you can execute say, outside say of. Say that for the people in the back, man, because a lot of coaches they don't understand that they get so personal sometimes, and they take it away from the business side of things, right? And it and it makes no sense to me because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you're building a brand, you're building a culture at the school, you're building a program. You recruited these players. Yeah. You recruited these guys. You're tell you're walking up to these to the to the parents of these kids you recruiting. I treat him like my son. Yeah, yeah just lying. They give you they give you the spiel. They give you the they, just uh, they sell you the dream. Just lying. They lying. But yeah. but really, they really just setting you up for the pitch because what happens if that coach gets fired before you even as soon as you sign, boom, he gets fired. Well, I mean, like, okay, so you you get a, you get you get a you get a um, at a disadvantage. Well, a lot, and we'll just talk about high school for a second. A lot of yeah. your high school coaches are, are PE teachers <laughs> that were not athletically inclined in the basketball realm, and if they were, they weren't high IQ guys. They Definitely. may have just been like athletic guys Definitely. that played a year or two in college. They can't break the game down. They don't understand how the game looks. Low IQ guys. Low IQ guys. Now, some of them are. <clears throat> Past athletes, high IQ guys, you know what I mean, and you see, you see them typically have great success. Former coaches, former, former, I mean, former, former, players. former players, and all right. all former players aren't good coaches. Boom. Like, let, don't get it misconstrued. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All all former players aren't good coaches. Coaching isn't for everybody. And all and all PE teachers aren't bad coaches either. That's a fact. You got some guys that are X and O coaches that never played a lick of basketball in their life in that understands the game of basketball, understands high IQ, understands accountability, discipline. Understands uh, personnel, family, people, things of that sort, and like they're they're exceptional. I think those are some amazing coaches. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. But like, let's not let's not get it, um, you know, misconstrued with like just because you're a high school coach, and I, you know, you're a good coach. Like, come on, you passed like a little test. You you don't mind sitting in the classroom for twelve hours out of your day. Definitely. And you're just in the right place. That you're a likable guy. Who knows? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you kiss some butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, teacher pay a little bit. Could be a lot of a lot of people are, are are like that. How do you feel about players doing that? Because is it is it more so of a guy? If a guy is a teacher's pet or not? I don't even like to use that terminology, but <laughs> I, I feel for the, for the situation because there's guys who will do that to get to have things in their favor. Like I've seen guys <laughs> in college. I've seen guys in college um, really change how they are in their whole personality almost in front of a coach, bro, just to get minutes. And honestly, I feel like that's a double edged sword because I I can't knock you for that. But if you're not standing on business when you when you put that when you put that 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 little act down. With people that's rocking with you, I can't rock with you. Yeah, I can't respect it. I, it ain't about me rocking with you. I can't respect it. Right. Um. But I've been in a position where I was like, "Yo, what do I need to do to play?" I've been in that position in college and in high school where I'm like, "Yo, you, you, different story for you. You ain't right. had an issue." Um. But I was in a different position where I, I was fighting for minutes against guys, and I mean, it wasn't that I wasn't talented. It was politics. It was this coach had this narrative about me. It was weird stuff. You know, coaches really might come out of nowhere with some weird energy. You'd be like, what right. is this? Where, yeah. where did this come from? Yeah. It's not even the same guy. It's definitely interesting because uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know. I'm not sure about 
I don't know if politics is good or bad. When politics is working in your favor, it's amazing. It's it only amazing. sucks when it isn't. Exactly. You know what I mean? So like, it's hard for me to say uh, if you should or shouldn't play the politics. It's, I think I would much more, I mean, much rather uh, say decide what you want to do. And, 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 and Dave Chappelle said this. He said his dad told him to set his price early. Like, you know what I mean? Like, basically, and, and how I took it was, figure out what you're willing to do. Mm-hmm. Figure out how far you're willing to go, what you're willing to sacrifice, what you're willing to give up, what morals are you willing to cross out, what how deceitful you're willing to be, how many friends you're willing to lose, family members, loved ones, character flaws. Jordan understood that. Like... Michael Jordan understood that. <laughs> I just, I so, I'm sorry. So, so my thing is like, you figure out all those things early. Yes. And once you figure out all those things, then you try not to sway away from those things. Like you go, okay, like I don't mind if I, you know, if, if you know, I'm going to be at practice 20 minutes early. Every practice. You know what I'm saying? And like that's, that's my thing. Like I don't think that's a terrible thing for a kid to do. You know what I mean? For a kid to do. Um but then you got some kids that go, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at practice 20 minutes early to tell on my roommate to coach. I hate that. That's the guy I don't like. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the teller. But but see his price. So 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 my thing I is like, like his price was different from your price. Mm-hmm. His his cloth was different from your cloth. Yeah. And I had to start to learn like, um, just because I stand on business does not mean that you have to stand on business. Even if I stand on business for you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, like I got into an altercation with a player at University of Memphis. Mm. It, was, it was a fair situation. Mm-hmm. I won. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Quite obvious. We just stand on business this whole episode. Yeah, I, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? I, I, I did my thing after, after mind you, I did after telling him, "Hey, relax. This ain't this ain't that." Mm-hmm. Three or four times. So, warning, all, warning shots. Yeah, just warning shots, but very calm on us. Right. Like, hey, bro. Like, we ain't on that. <laughs> relax. He like, oh, no, I'm from Orange Mound. I'm I'm from Orange Mound, Memphis. I'm gangster. That's cool, bro. Relax. Take another step back. Now I'm two steps back. Oh, I don't care nothing about that. Three steps back. Now I will. I won't step four steps back. I'm falling off a cliff. Mm-hmm. You can't fall off. The cliff. I can't fall off a cliff. So at that point, you know what I mean. I said, okay. I took him up on his offer. I believed him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I believed him. I said, oh, okay. I believe you want to fight. Okay. Now I believe you. Right. I didn't believe you at first, but now I believe. You. Yeah. Cool. That's where we go. Yeah. Had to wake him up. And so my thing is like that should have to me. It stayed in house. It was brothers. Mm-hmm. Man, we got into an altercation. We came to a disagreement. Whoever started, whoever finished it, whatever, is washed. I came to a situation where he was going to the coach. Tell him. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Oh, you know, this, that, and for. But, you know, so, but, but, but he said his price different than I set my price. There's a lot of guy. There's a lot of guys via high school, via and via and via college that I that I've come in contact with that let after the fact they came to me and said, "Hey Jay, bro, I ain't gonna lie, man. You, you the most, you one of the most solid guys I've ever played with. You one of the most solid teammates I've ever had. Like now that we think about, like now that I think about, now that I'm older, now that I'm older, and I wasn't perfect. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't perfect. I had my flaws. You know what I mean? There's things. There's things that I thought that I definitely could have done better. Definitely. You know what I mean, and 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 a lot of an, an involved teammates in my in my youthful years, freshman sophomore year, when guys are you know maybe be going out or playing a video game at each other's houses. I never went just because like I was chilling with my girl. I was going to the gym. A lot of people don't know when I was at Ole Miss, I was living in the gym. Mm. That's um. I was like not and not not figuratively, right? Literally, right. my bag. Is my bag of clothes, everything, I'm on the couch, at the gym, with the game, on the couch, fall asleep, wake up, watch TV, brush my teeth, go to the court. I'm living at the gym. Living. How do you feel like that That really... Do you, how do you... And do got you, bashed for it. But, but, but besides that, that's, that's fucked up. But besides that, do you feel like that really took... Do you feel like you, you benefited at a high level from that? 
Because there's been guys. Yeah, yeah. I benefit from a high level, but then you know I, I tore my groin. Mm, that's a so a lot of people don't know. So I tore my groin. At, Fully. At, yeah, yeah. So well, basically, like, so everything came off except like one little strand. I had to, and so I was in practice, and you know, uh, Coach AK was like basically telling me I was BSing because I wasn't running hard enough, and I'm trying to explain to him like, yo, like my right leg is like I don't have I. This is fast as I can run. But you got to understand the stigmatism that followed me, the perception that's followed me from University of Memphis when He's I'm not running. not a hard run- worker guy. No, I don't think they ever questioned my hard work. I, they just thought I was combative. Mm-hmm. That, that, that I just combated authority. Definitely, yeah. You know what I mean? And I heard that one. Yeah, like that. And that was the thing. It's like, I didn't combat authority. I, I, I combated dumb shit. Right. Like, don't tell me. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a kamikaze guy. I'm not a kamikaze. I'm not a guy, hey, man, get in the plane. Go crash the plane into the boat. If you live, you die when you get back. You die on this is this is you're the, you're our best weapon. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy that's gonna say, "Hey man, can we put robots in this plane and kill the robot?" Like I'm not dying like this, Brody. And yeah, and 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 and, and disclaimer, like that's you know that's you know that's a huge war. So maybe their their pride and their culture and their tradition is built a lot different. So like, let me not. I'm not trying to, you know, shit on, you know, the Japanese and, and the kamikaze. Like, that's not what I'm trying to do. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is like, for me, it it has to make a lot of sense to me. And so like, if if we're going to any type of war, I'm not dying without it making sense. Definitely, it has to make sense. Make so, it make sense. Yeah. So like, you know, so I, you know, I'm 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 at University of Mississippi, and there's a perception that precedes me. Mm-hmm. He's a great basketball player. Doesn't like authority. So when he's telling me to run harder and I'm telling him, coach, I can't, he's not looking at it like, yo, he might really be hurt. He's just looking at it as like, yo, he's being combative. Right. He's, he's bullshit. He's being combative. He, he just want to go back and forth with me. But then we come to find out. I go to a doctor. The doctor's like, I don't know how you walking. Mm. Mm. You shouldn't even be walking, let alone playing basketball. You're tripping. They panic. Send me to the... Because they were dead wrong. Right, so they trying to cover their ass. They trying to cover. They send me up to New Jersey or Philadelphia to like the best like growing specialist. They had to get my stuff, you know, put back together, whatever. And then you had surgery. Yeah, I had to have surgery. Damn. And then um, when I came back, when I came back, I I was supposed to sit out like I don't know nine months. I was back in like four, mm. playing. Shouldn't have been playing. Overweight, slow. You know what I mean? Like all those things. Like shouldn't have been playing. Yeah. It's like, nah, we need you. Come on, come on. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. Before we take a mediate uh, uh, intermission and pull this up, I got one question for you. Toughest college player that you competed against in college, despite school, despite school, during your collegiate career. The toughest player, I, the toughest player I played against. I didn't guard him, but the toughest player I played against. And just totality, because he was just was Jahi Carson in college. Oh, the short guy. He was quick, bouncy. I remember Jahi Carson. Jahi Carson. Oh man, he was a bucket. He Where did he go to college us, again? Arizona State. Right, AZ State. Man, he, he cooked was going us. Crazy up there. And then uh, University of Nevada had a guy. <laughs> can't remember his name, but University of Nevada had a guy. Pro guy. Uh, did he play in, in the NBA? I'm not sure he played in the NBA or not. Oh, geez. Pro, yeah, yeah, pro, pro guy, guy, pro guy, yeah, pro guy. Pro guy. Um, but um, he was super tough. Mm-hmm. He was super tough. But those those are the two guys that I played against that said, oh, yeah, they, they they tough. But, you know, a lot of people don't know, like, statistically, I was the best defender, like, like one-on-one possessions, like in college, statistically. Yeah. So, like, if I'm guarding you and you got the ball, like, I was the best defender. In- On-ball defender. On ball, like from you having the ball and going to get a bucket, mm. that that was like not happening on me. Mm. And it was funny because like I was never like a super defensive guy, but like you know what I mean, like my you had men- to lock in, you locked in. Well, no, it's just like my mentality changed mm-hmm. because because like I said, the perception of me changed. So I became that guy that turned down open shots to pass to another guy mm-hmm. to keep my teammates like to like me and have the coach like me and be like, oh, he's. I was trying to change this narrative so bad that it 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 it, it, it deflated me mm-hmm. and it harmed me more than it helped me. Mm-hmm. Because talk that shit, talk that shit. Life is a balance, that's that's what you know. But it's like I think had I been a player that said that 
had I been the play, had I been the same combative player that they that they that they uh perceived me to be, but I averaged thirty, they wouldn't have had a problem with me. Well, they had a problem. With, we had to talk about the other night when we say boogie, right? Boogie was getting thirty. They got a problem with boogie. Yeah. So you had. So my thing is like you have you have to be worth the problem that you are. Mm. That's big. So by me by me turning down shots and by me like basically the perception still stayed there. Right. So even though I was like a good locker room guy and I'd like try to stay quiet and try not to like get up, you know what I mean? Anything like that, like the perception was still there. Right. So it's like, oh, this combative, you know, uh, combative guy doesn't like authority. And on top of that, like ah, he's not scoring the ball as much as we'd like. Or let's say I'll go. I had a game. I had twenty seven. Coach sat me down and said, I think you're looking our younger guys. He ain't say that. Why myself? Which team? I was at UNLV. Really? Yeah. You're looking at our young guys off. Feel like you're playing selfish. So tell me how how did you get your buckets in that game? Was it was it all around? Was it yeah? I was just I was shots? just wide open. It was just like I just felt like it was my time. Like bro, like I can do this. Definitely. And then like every time I did it, I got hit with a jab and like I was so I was so off the porch. Then I was so on the porch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and 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 like. When I was getting into my rhythm, that game, and I was feeling good, like, yo, like, this is about to be the season. This is about to be my breakout. And when he said that, I folded. I went and said, man, like, I need to keep my coach happy. I need to keep my team happy. I don't want them to think I'm selfish. You, you like, didn't fold. You just changed your... your, your, your I folded. Your okay. I folded because what I should have did was say, hey, I should have said, hey, coach, you know what I mean? Like, let's look at the film together. That's a fact. We sit down and look at the film. Hey, coach, when did I look them off? That's a fact. When was I selfish? That's a fact. Explain to me, because I need to learn. I'm trying to learn. I want to be the best player for this team. Mm. I'm working. Coach, I'm here early. I'm here late to be the best player on the team so we can win. Mm. How can I get better? Mm. Show me. Show me what you mean, because, like, you know, just by vocal, I, I, can't, I can't understand it. Let's sit down. And see, what would happen is we would have sat down, and he would have said, damn, this motherfucker just had a great game. This dude is kind of just cold. He's just good. <laughs> I, I was lying. Right. I was capping, essentially. And I would have held him accountable, but also by not by not taking a jab at his authority. Right, but it was and his that, chieftain. Right. Was he was he was he that type of coach to take those things personal or not even personal, but triggers. Triggers. No, he's he was a great guy. Okay. Great guy. Don't get me wrong, great guy. But what my boy and, 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 and what what my boy in Black Panther say when T'Challa went to the afterlife. What do you say? And when he said that, he said, I want to be a king like you. And he said, you're going to struggle. And he said, why? He said, you know, you're a great guy. And it's hard to be king and a great guy. It's hard to be a good head coach and a great, you know what I mean? It's hard. No, it definitely, it is. It and, is. and please everybody. Definitely. And he was, he, was, he was a good guy in the sense of like he wanted to keep everybody happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that'll as a, hurt you. That'll hurt. That yeah. can hurt you. Whereas it when you're a coach, you. yeah, when you're a coach, like, Instead of trying to keep everybody happy, you keep everybody accountable. You set a standard. You're dealing with kids and parents. Hey, look, this is our standard. If you if you if you if you drop below this standard, you sit. If you go above this standard, you have a chance to play. Period. Period. A lot of coaches don't stand by that. No, because coaches don't stand on business. They stand they they stand on a form of business mm -hmm. that do, that doesn't di di uh, directly correlate with what we as young uh, men would consider business now. Most definitely. You know what I mean? Like like holding each other accountable. Being disciplined, stuff like that. Like, you know, I'll say something to you, or you say something to me. It's nothing for you to come to me and say, "AJ, hey, man, like, I think you should have handled it this way." And I go, "You're right." Same vice versa. Ain't nothing you know what I mean? Like a lot of college coaches, like they'll rather be passive aggressive, Definitely. so they don't they don't ruffle any feathers. Well and that works for some some teams, but most oftentimes it it, it you 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 don't see it last for for, no, for very long. You don't. And a lot of times you see. Really good coaches come from what backgrounds, like military backgrounds, or a past coach. You know what I mean? Like why? Why that though? Some coaches got bullied growing up. Yeah, some coaches got bullied growing up. Some coaches. Some coaches were harmless. Were That's what we call on guys. Yeah. Guys who had to play hard and fight hard. Yeah. Versus guys that and, and were jealous of the guy that that that, 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 that maybe didn't work. And this is where this is, they are jealous of sometimes of the guy that maybe didn't work as hard, but was just. Still better. Thanks. So now you have a now now you're in a situation where you're a coach, and you're and you have a guy that whose work ethic isn't as good, 
But just bet, you know what I mean. So it's, it's just inter- it's interesting. That's why I think like college coaches needs to, you know, coaches in general. Like you set a standard, you set, you hold people accountable, you you make sure your team is disciplined, top to bottom. You know what I mean? And 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 you know, you you try to figure it out from there. But uh, that don't often happen. If you're a McDonald's All American, it works in your favor. If you're a McDonald's All American, you walk in the gym and there's a kid that came from from up the street. That no one knows, and he busts your tail every single day. Guess who gonna play? Him. No, the McDonald's All American. Are you crazy? I mean, I mean, look, I don't. I mean, hey, are you crazy? Some coaches might not do that. What coach? What coaches are going to play? If I get a five star recruit, right. I'm saying I would handle it different. Definitely, you got to get out the mud with me. Definitely. But what I'm saying is the average coach, the average coach, if 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 a five star recruit comes in. So five star crews transfers into Wheeler High School from New York, and a kid from up the street dogs him every day. And it's known. It's known within 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 their within ecosystem. The group, within the group, right. Within the eco. That guy, that McDonald's All American is going to play. For sure. For sure. Based on the status quo. Of- based on the status quo. Yeah, based on the status quo. Most definitely. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Now, whether that's good or bad, I don't, I don't, I don't know. No. But that that's definitely that's definitely what happens more often than than it doesn't. You're right. You're right. You're right. You were about to say something too. You were saying some some of the guys that don't got to work as hard, but are more talented though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, there's a lot of coach. Some coaches don't like that because then that throws off your your niche as a team. It throws off your uh your your uh, identity because some guys get, you know it. I'm sure you were a McDonald's guy, so. When you step on the court first week on a new campus, you become the hunted, in a sense. You're not the hunter. You become the hunted. Because niggas like, oh, yeah, he's a McDonald's guy. I'm saying, in a sense of, yeah, these are your, these are your teammates. These, these are your guys. And don't, not, I'm not talking about the ones, you know, we know, you know, we're filtering certain people out. But these are your teammates. You're trying to win. That's the, that's the original goal. We're trying to win. One of the well, I mean, I just, I, classes. yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I agree, I agree, we're targeted, but I don't, I, I just don't like, I don't, I just don't like the verb between you call like, like I got like hunted. You don't like that? Yeah, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> of that, Cause I'm a killer. I hunt. I get that, but you still can be the hunted and be a killer. Yeah, but I'm saying, Kobe but the, was hunted. Exactly, but but call me a hunter that 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 is hunted. I mean, call me the hunter that someone is, you know, even out to give me. I'm not the hunted. John Wick was hunted, but he's a killer. He wasn't hunted. Nigga was John Wick's him. a killer. And people were after him. But he was killer. He was okay. He was hunted. He was all right. He was, a, he was John, hunted. John he was Wick hunted. was cold. John Wick, John Wick was cold. I just, don't, I just don't like the word. Okay. The, I mean, whether whether it's a fact or not is, is, is you know, so you could you, juggle it being you, a fact. You were hunted, but you were still, as while being a hunter. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. But did you feel the energy, though? That's what I'm saying. Did you feel the energy at any of school? Cause I mean, you, you had. I mean, guys. yeah, you de- you definitely feel the you definitely feel like the jealousy. You definitely feel the hate envy. and uh, the envy. Um, and like you gotta understand, like you're dealing with a group of you're you're dealing with a team or a group of players that like let's say you go out, let's say you go to school out of state. Your fifty percent of your team is going to be from that state, that said state. Fifty, or more. Or more. Uh, they have friend groups. They have you know what I mean. So like. If they built you, the foundation. They built the foundation. So, like, you're coming into their their home and basically saying, establishing, this is my place now. This is my territory. You know what I mean? And, like, you know, that could be good if they're welcoming and, and, and they're embracing, but that can also be bad if they, they feel like, nah, this is my place. Yeah. Or if they feel like you guys are comparable in ways. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just, it's just um, you know, I, I wouldn't call it, I would call it some form of jealousy, some form of envy, some form of hate. But also, like, we'll say, like, you know, it's it is they're youthful, mm-hmm. you're young, yeah, you're and young. and we also understand that like people come from different cloths. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So we gonna we gonna pop this this wand right here, and I got a question for you as we popping it. Pause. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna pull up this one first. You know what I mean? This is in celebration, y'all, for the first episode, man. You know, shout out to the mob. It's on my T. I'm a part of the mob. You <laughs> yes, see, big, big mob. You dig? <laughs> big collabs yes, coming sir. soon. 
y'all y'all peep it because because we stand on business. Yeah. And it, whether you like it or not, you can hate. You can you can you can like us but not like us. But we not telling no lies. Nah. So so we just telling our truth. <laughs> That's all it is. I mean, you can you can feel how you feel about an opinion. <laughs> But we telling our truth and we telling you what it is. Yeah, it's so, big steppers, man. Yeah, big big steppers. on the earth. Shout out, shout out to my boy Jay, fam. You shout know, out. Shout out to this first episode. You know, we had to do it. You know, I tweaked. I tweaked. There we go. So, the question I got for you is: You in college? You 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 reevaluate. Well, you reevaluate in college, and you think. You just thinking to yourself. I don't know if you do this or not. You know, I'm just I'm just hypothetically speaking. This guy, without a doubt, was a dog. I may not have had a a relationship with him. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But undeniably, I need two guys. I don't want to even do three. Three is a little bit too much. Two guys out of your whole college career. You're just like you know what, playing with, not against, playing with on your team on the same roster. I got to give it to him. Undeniably, he is a dog. Mentality-wise, skill set-wise, give me two. You can ponder. You know, you can think. Mm. Six, six, six. Chris Warren was a dog. Where'd he go? Where'd went he, to, he, went to, he went to the University of Mississippi. He went to Ole Miss. Okay. What I position? Point guard. Might be from Florida. He might be 5'10". That may be a stretch. Damn. What is he, a shooter? What kind of guy was he? Dog. So he was a scorer. If you're saying dog, he he's getting buckets and bunches. Yeah, getting bu- getting buckets and but might be top five all time lean all time lean scorer. Maybe one. Oh, at, 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 yeah, he, he might be number, he, number one he at Ole Miss. At Ole Miss might be number one. Say his name again. Chris Warren. Chris dog. Warren. I've I've heard I've heard of him. Big time. He played he play on TNT and the TBT. Okay. 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 Yeah. Where's number sixty nine? Dog. 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 Um. <sighs> another dog. One more. That you play with. Because your definition of dog is not the same as everyone else's. And we have a similar definition of dog. I feel like we agree on that. But people watching, what's your definition of dog? Before you answer that second question. Before you no, I got I gotta I gotta give you the second one first. Okay, give me the second one, then go ahead and do this. Um I think I think I'm gonna go uh <clears throat> Antonio Barton. Will Barton's brother. I ain't even know Will. Shout out Will. Shout out Baltimore. My pops out there. Shout out B more. Yeah. Got people out there. I ain't even know Will had a brother. Dog. Really? Garv? Dog. He was a dog. I think he yeah, he was he was a dog. Because because Will 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 was, was cool. Memphis. Oh, he was in Memphis. Yeah, because Will Will was was, was, young, was bro. Yeah, Will was fire. Will was fire. Will wow. Will's a Shout wizard. Shout out to Will. He a legend in B. So wizard for sure. Definitely. But um his brother had to be a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like they was around the same. Like I gotta be a dog because Will was such a wizard. Like he had to be like that, Definitely. that tough guy. You know what I mean? So like he 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 owned that. Shit, it um, just kind of wore off on him. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think I think those. Two, and I uh, honorable mention is um, uh, Dundrikas Nelson from Ole Miss as well. Dundrikas Nelson. Yeah, his what name position? was Dundrikas. He liked to, like like undersized too, but I I felt like he he had he had dog qualities. <laughs> really. Yeah, he was a dog. He showed it. Yeah, he was he was a dog. Mm-hmm. But other than that, um, I played with some good players. Um, but uh, yeah, nah, um, I didn't play with a lot, a lot of dogs. They didn't care about winning. It's it's hard for me to call you a dog when you just don't care about winning. That's a fact. It's all about <coughs> what are you doing if we're not winning? Yeah, you know what I mean. So what like, we doing if we don't care about winning? Yeah. So um, and that goes for myself too. I wasn't a dog in college. You feel like that? Uh-huh. I wasn't. I call a spade a spade. I wasn't a dog in college. I didn't win enough. Mm-hmm. I didn't keep the mindset that I had before and after college yeah. while I was during my tenure in college. Because every time, it's like, you know, if, if, if you're a lion and you're in a cage with a bunch of kittens, like, you can't adapt to, you can't adapt no, definitely. kitten behavior. Just because they let you out the kennel, because you're safe. So my thing was, I wanted to start being let out the kennel, and I, because I started seeing, oh, kennels get out. I mean, kitties get out. They're nice. People like to play with them and pat on their head. People can approach them. They like kittens. <laughs> they won't let me out the cage if I'm a lion. 
Because you can't pet me. Yeah, I'm you unpredictable. Can't, you can't control you. Can't control me, can't pet me, and I bite. I don't show teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, that's facts, though. Yeah. So, 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 you know. <laughs> um, but a lot of times in order to play, a lot of coaches want want you to turn into a, a kitten. Or, like I said earlier, like you have to be such in, in a state. That you're so locked in, that you're so that you're so productive at being at that lying state, that when they let you out, you can you can produce, and they can tame you enough to put you back in your cage. Now, see, when you get older and you start to get more wiser, you some some younger kids start to pick it up, pick up on it younger. They understand the balance of it. Definitely. It's like I am a beast, but I know how to tame it, and I know when. To distribute this type of energy, for sure, and when it, re- you know, and when to, and when to retract it, for sure, and that's that's hard to 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 know when you're young, yeah. but that's kind of where you want to be. Oh, for sure, you want to be a lion. You, wanna you never want to be a kitten. Right. People should should people should be intimidated, nervous yeah. around you. Yeah. Should people should watch what they say around you? Definitely. They should. Definitely. Definitely. So that. and that and that's a part of being this lion. You know, or, or 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 this dog. That's that's a part of that. So you you're saying you grew into the dog? No, you had the dog. I had it. You always had the dog. I had it. Got to college, media. Lost I mean, of it. yeah, lost sight of, of it. it. Yeah, I mean, because you For understand. Just a few like, years. Yeah, I mean, my freshman year, I'm top ten on a draft board. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I remember. And then and then you know, my grandma calls me because my name goes on a ticker about being a bad kid and being disruptive and notorious gang leader and right, all this. So all it's the, like... All the false narratives. Yeah, so it's like now I have to go in and and be like, okay, well, let me fix me that. being who I am is wrong. Mm. You're, you're, young, you're a young man. You still are trying to identify with who you really are. Mm. And then once you start to kind of like figure it out a little bit, someone tells you, no, you're wrong. They don't tell you how to tame it. They don't tell you how to get help. That's they just the tell problem. you you're wrong. They tell you, oh, you're 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 angry. You shouldn't be angry. They don't know your past. They don't care. You shut up and dribble. So you should be thankful that we gave you a scholarship. Definitely. You shouldn't have any problem. You know what I mean? So like those are the things that they that they spawn on you. And like a lot of times, <coughs> even like my parents, like that was during the time where it's like, oh, go get your education. Mm-hmm. Because had I had a son in my same situation, I'm telling him, "Hey, bro, get your education." No, why? <laughs> if if you're no, you're right. Me personally, I'm doing. I'm I'm, go, I'm taking the opportunity. It's like I might not come back. You gotta live in the now when it comes to sports. You right. Know what I'm saying you gotta live in the now. It's like my thing. My thing is like, you want me to go to school for 12 years? I got a, I got friends that are that that are doctors. Right. They just graduated last year. We went, got out of high school the same year. Master shit though. Not yeah. just regular degree. Cool, master shit. Master you got to pay that debt back. No, for sure. Couple hundred racks. For sure. That's not... T- it comes and with you're a cost. getting paid like, what, 500 racks a year? It comes with a cost. To a meal? That's a fact. I can have M's at 17, 18 if I go to the league. So why are you telling me being an NBA player is bad? Yeah. The same odds of you becoming a doctor? It's probably comparable to the odds of you becoming an NBA player. That's a fact. It's similar, but people won't ever tell you that. Oh, the ball, the ball will stop bouncing. Right. I don't want a 90-year-old doctor. That's a fact. Everything stops at one point. What do you want? Right. Like, that's not a bad job. That's no. a great job. Great you're telling job. me, are you telling me at, at 18, I'm finna cash a check for 20 mil and a bonus for 10 on top of that? Now, the thing that they should do, like we always talk about, is you have to educate these young financial kids. Literacy. Financial literacy. Vocational skills. Get them mental health. Those those are the building blocks that should be put in place, not the narrative that oh like the the ball will stop bouncing and it's terrible. You need to get your education because you know how much I use my education now. Zero. Right. It's time. I got an AA in accounting. I got a bachelor's in in sociology. I don't what I'm doing. I can't get a job. I can get a job for accounting, but I can't get a job. So in doing what? Right. Get paid what? Right. Slavery. Like On top time. of that, how many athletes go to college and can, p- and can pick a degree that they actually want to partake in? Mm. I remember I went to University of Memphis and told Coach Pastner, hey, look, I want to do pre-law. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> not doing no pre-law. <laughs> That's too much work. You got to you came here to play basketball. Mm. That's what they want us to do. I mean, that's what we're really essentially doing. But see, but see, but see that that's the narrative that a lot of people don't really don't really identify with cuz this is what I'm going to tell you. So we're getting a free free education, right? Mm-hmm. But we're getting an education that we don't want. We're getting an education that is pre-picked for us. Most college athletes have have degrees in five different categories. I don't know them, but I know they were in five. Sociology is one. Parks and recs or something. Communications. Communications. Maybe something to do with grass or lawn or Yeah, like you're within five I'm telling you, 80% of basketball players and football players have degrees in five different categories. Communications is a big one. Or less. Definitely. It's like so yeah, we're getting a free education, but let's talk about the edu- the quality of education we're getting. Definitely. Definitely. You know what I mean? On top of that, like how many past players have jobs. What are they doing now? These are questions that you should be asking for your kid when they go to college. Mm. Hey, yeah, yeah, coach such and such. Yeah, I get that. It's a great program. I understand that you're going to pigeonhole my child into one of these five degrees. That's okay, because my question is, what what infrastructure do you have? What ecosystem have you established for my child to work and get paid a substantial amount after post-college with the degree that you're, you're, that you're pigeonholing him into? I'm okay with you pigeonholing him into a career, but what I'm saying is, after that, if he was to get a job in this career, mm-hmm. the average, the median income is thirty thousand dollars a year. That's not why my son is coming here. Definitely. But if you can, but if you can make sure that he's, oh no, my, our past players work in this company, this company, their their median income is around two hundred and fifty k. Cool, my son is good here, or my daughter is good here because I know after they get done playing with whatever degree they have. This piece of paper and their and their connection to us will land them in a great spot, Definitely. whether it be Definitely on the prepared. coaching staff or 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 in a, you know or, or working a nine to five. You know what I mean? Like that. That's what. That's why you know you look at prestigious colleges like just a paper from Harvard, yeah. Yale's, just yeah. a paper from I Yale, mean, period. Yale's, yeah. Cornell. You know what I'm saying? What does a paper from from Ole Miss actually get you? It'll get you a job. But where? I know, I know. I, I went to UNLV lo- yeah. and I enjoy UNLV. You gotta, under- you gotta understand, like I mean, UNLV is a basketball mecca. It's almost like a basketball mecca. Yeah, like definitely. it's it's everything. The running Rebels got history. Come on now. How many running rebels that played at UNLV are are like the, the janitor? <laughs> like guys who jersey is kind of in the rafters. Right. They're the usher at the game. And they're like, oh, we got him a job. What? He's the usher? <laughs> He's the janitor? This is what you got this is what you did for the guy that y'all screamed and cheered and helped put this school in a position that people know their existence. Now, now understand that there are some past players that go through some trials and tribulations outside of basketball off that court. off the court issues that may hinder them from getting like a quality job. Don't don't get me wrong. It hinders their future. Yeah, hinders, you know what I mean? Cause the, the, you know, a lot of motherfuckers be on dope. They drug druggies. Dope. And bad, bad decisions, bad decisions, uh, uh, life-threatening decisions, and even like gambling is 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 crazy out there. It's definitely because that's a, that's There's an a addictive lot of thing. Guys that are addicted to gambling. I'm not against the parlays here and there, y'all, but some guys it, it, it's, it's it's addictive it's, to them. It's, it's addictive. So what I'm saying is, out of out of you know ten of the of the post rebels running rebels that I've come in contact with. Five of them work at the gym. Mm. And now there's no coaches. Right. Two are ushers. Mm. One is a janitor. One is like a, a runaround guy, do boy. So, like, yeah, so your ecosystem does not set you, your ecosystem is set for 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 the basketball players to run around and, and put on a show and be entertaining. And once you're done with them, you ring them up, you throw them out. Now there are some outliers. Like me, I was able, I was, I was fortunate enough to come in contact with some good people in Las Vegas, made some good connections. You know what I mean? Like even like you know, I I, I care for Coach Rice, but even like they used to have a they used to have a meeting where they brought the senior the senior guards to meet with like a lot of the boosters. You know, Coach Rice only took the 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 Cody Doolin, who was the white guard that we had. He only had been there one year. He never took me not one. Day. I didn't even know they existed until after the fact. He never took me not to one meeting. 
So I never met these boosters. I never had these conversations with them. Like, why, though? That's a fact. That was my next question. I don't know. Because he'll still hit me up today and just go, hey, man, like, I just want to say, like, nah, because he'll say he'll send me clips like, yo, this is a great place, a great read. I didn't even see that six years ago. Like, you were doing boo woo woo And it's like, yo, like, I appreciate you. That's my dog. But it's like, <laughs> at the same time, it's like, bro, that's, that shit was sell. Yeah. Don't talk to me about it. You should have made that adjustment then. 100%. You know what I mean? So he, it's just he feels guilt. Yeah, whatever he feels, whatever he feels. But what I'm saying is like, so, 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 you know, those are those are questions that you need to ask your your you know your college or or whatever situation you're getting into because, like I said, you see a lot of these colleges that we put on a high pedestal or think they're great and their ecosystem is fucked up. That's these co- these college guys will will damn near break their necks and kill for a name that's on the front of their chest. Definitely. And then post, post-college, post they can't even get a job in that city mm. that's worth a damn. Mm. And it's nothing. It's nothing for them to put you in a position. Now, I'm not saying that guy gets that job and half-asses it and just get reward, rewarded for do, doing nothing. Well, what about the guy who does, oh, they, they throw a job too, and he works his way up? Yeah, like, even that. I'm, the, I'm fine with that. What about a guy who works his way up, and next thing you know, he's a grad assistant that turns into an assistant coach. I'm manager. fine with that, but is, is that a reality? How many grad assistants that play played at this Small at percentage. this at this university is here? Small percentage. And and what's the real what's the reality of them working their way onto the coaching staff? Politics. Has it done before? Politics. So it's a percentage of politics that plays in the role of that too. So you that's what, what, what that's what you have to account for. Exactly. I had I had a grad assistant that played at UNLV prior to prior to me uh, being there. He he helped us with our homework and stuff. Great guy. Great guy, but guess what he's doing? <laughs> he ain't no coach. Nah, he's still probably helping people with homework. So why though? That's messed up. He's a great he could be a great coach. But the yeah. ecosystem isn't built for him to for him to step into that role. Yeah. Yeah. Which is messed well, I'm not gonna say it's messed up. It's interesting. It is interesting. It's unfortunate. It should drive it should drive conversation. It should drive conversation. We sparking it right so now. So I'm not mad at kids. I'm not mad at kids skipping college and going to the pros. Now we can touch on that. How during the time me and you were in high school, you were in the class. Really, you could have been class of twenty eleven. A lot of people don't know that, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and disclaim that right now. He could have played in my class, but he graduated a year ahead. Yeah. So that's tough. A lot of guys today who do that, shaky guys. Uh, example, I won't say he's shaky. He's pretty solid, but I'll give Imani Bates his credit. He's a skillful guy. Should have stayed in high school one more year, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just tell you the truth. You should have stayed in high school one more year, got that, got that experience, and developed. Don't jump the gun. Know you're a pro internally, but love the process. Uh, trust the process. You get what I'm saying? But you know, instead of you know going that route, the avenues that we had in high school about straight to the league, it was only NBA or nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. back then. It wasn't. Yeah. Oh, we got the, you got this ball club in, in in France. You got this ball club <coughs> in Portugal. You got this ball club in. Monaco. What existed? We just we just weren't we weren't well well Woke. aware. So Brandon Jennings did it. Brandon Jennings did it, but he did he was one of the first to do it. He was one of the first to do it. So what I'm saying is, by the time we came up, we could have taken that route as well. But it wasn't the popular route. Yeah, I mean, we it, just like I said, still... we're just yeah. Well, it wasn't the popular route because it was it wasn't. Talked about, you know what I mean? It, it just yeah. wasn't talked about. It, it's, it's just kind of like Crocs. Crocs been around for a minute, but you know when people started rocking with Crocs recently, mm. and start saying, "Oh, Crocs is cool for real." Well, when black people start rocking Crocs, it yeah, became we, we always it culturalize became, everything. Yeah, you know became, what we do. We it became culturally. Our people are trendsetters. We always yeah, listen sure. to every aspect of life, everything sure. out here, business related, industry related. We, we, we shake, we the shake, trend. yeah, we shake the market. Yeah, we shake the market. We control the market. They know this. Come on, one yeah. percenters, y'all know, but um. You know, just thinking about your perspective back then, you didn't, you weren't thinking back then. Okay, yeah, you know I mean, let me uh, see how the league work out, and then let me do this. It was just league or nothing at the time. And if you look back and reevaluate, like college, when you were mock draft lottery, see preseason, and you let me tell you the, something funny. I never saw myself in the NBA. Really. Why not? Please, please elaborate. Cause it you, was, you, it's not because of the skill set. I want to know why. What's the why? 
Because it's not because of skill. I know it's not. I always thought I would play in the NBA because of my talent. I never saw myself in the NBA. And to me, it's like two different things. I think some people, like, they manifest it or they think about it. They, like, they can envision it. I never really envisioned it. I just said, like, it was just, like, one of those things. Was like, oh, like, it's just a thing. So wasn't a childhood dream of yours? No. That's real. It was just that's like, that's it was, interesting. It was, it was just a thing. Too. It was just a thing. It was just like, yo, it's 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 a thing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm I'm good. It's a, it's a thing. I don't know why. I don't know when it turned, but it's a thing. It's like if you're really good at math and somebody's like, yo, how you get good at math? You're just like, at some point, you're just like, I'm just good. Like you know what I mean? Like I don't. It's I too. Just, I'm, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like I, I did it when I was younger. I did it so much that it's just a thing. Like the success that comes from being this good is just inevitable to some extent. Um. But yeah, I, I I never seen myself playing the NBA. But 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 why though? Because because in my mind, I'm thinking a guy like you. So I was a cocky bastard, and to I was confident. I don't think I was cocky to some to some degree. You had think, cockiness back then. But I also think it was. But confidence. there's nothing wrong with co- it. Is confidence? It was confidence, and it I, could I fall think, hand in hand. Yeah, I think it was confidence um, more so than cockiness. But I think there's a percent. Percent of cockiness that has to go into confidence in order for you to be confident. One hundred percent. Um. Well said. And so, like, I was that kid that, cause, cause someone would come to me and challenge me and go, "Well, what, what if you get hurt? What if you hurt, hurt your ankle?" And I go, "I'm gonna be rich, <laughs> regardless. <laughs> I'm gonna have paperwork, you regardless. Facts. I'm gonna be running, sh- regardless, up. because I'm, I'm be me. Respected. Cause I'm me. At the end of the day, I'm me, and I don't think y'all understand that. I'm me." Oh, what does that mean? It means exactly that. Who are you? Me. Right. And I and like I had that I had that about me. So like if basketball wasn't you know what I mean? I'm just like, all right, cool. It just ain't working out. Yeah, I'm a I'm a pivot and I'm gonna make this work. That's a fact. That's a fact, bro. That's a fact. And a like, lot of guys have an issue with that. A lot of guys have an issue with that. But it's like, you know, I'm I'm guys. I'm confident and and it takes time. You know what I mean? It takes growth. It's like even like now, like you gotta understand, like had an opportunity to go play, you know, overseas and supposed to be gone. Yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't particularly like the payday that, that they offered me. You know your worth. So I stayed home. By staying home, I said, man, okay, boom, I'm me. I have a certain lifestyle, certain hat, like certain things I need to do. So what I'm gonna do? Okay, boom, I'm gonna go do 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 do. I mean doing t-shirt business, got a t-shirt Tiny shop, print drive. shop. Turkey drive, donate 200, 200 plus turkeys. Let's stand on business. Free, on that. You know what I'm that saying? Was, that was that was huge. Yeah, free and, basketball and, and, clinic. And, and the thing about it is, a lot of guys who come from their native state and they are a legend, people still not looking up to them two, three, four years, 20, 10 years down the road. Right. We talk about Ryan Harrell because of basketball. Right. What has he done for his people? What has he done for his foundation, for his roots, for for the people that he came up with? Well, I don't know. Maybe, I'm not maybe saying I'm not. I'm not talking about Ryan, and I'm just using right. him as an example right, right, because right. he's a legend. Right, right. right. I could say I could have said Lorenzo Brown. Right. I could have said Daquan Jones. I could have right. said Taj right. Tate. I could have said a yeah. lot of guys. And then Marcus you also Stone. have to understand, like understand, like, and and I, I'll give them I'll give them this credit because I was you know I'm a person that sometimes are in their shoes. You're talking about ten months out of the year you're gone from your family. <sighs> That's tough. So two months that you so two months you come back. I understand you have to re prepare to leave. So let's say one month you take if you're making a substantial amount of money overseas. You take one month. You spend that with your your significant other or your child that you're with. Y'all go take a vacation. Y'all go see family. Y'all do whatever. Y'all have fun. You have another month that you're almost laser focused to go back into your approaching season for another ten months. So for a lot of these overseas cats, it is very difficult for them to to touch their neighborhoods and touch their their uh their 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 um uh, uh environment environment like like we expect them to but see we have to understand what they're going through and 100%. like you know what I mean what their I'm process looks that. like That's whereas good- like me typically I've thrown I've thrown plenty of camps and been overseas mm-hmm. free camps for kids mm-hmm. where I've you know donated food and shirts and you know had post you know past uh professional players donate shoes and stuff so I've done these things but from from a zoom from from away um now it's is different for me and I'm being put in this different light not because of the success I've seen in basketball but because I'm here mm-hmm. and see that's a luxury in a sense but that's also you know what I mean like I'm here they're gone they're handling business they're standing on the business that they that they have to attend to now exactly so I can't I can't knock them for that like 
You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm getting a lot of credit just because of I'm in the flesh. Had 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 the team. Well, you actually, it's not just because you're in the flesh, but because you actually initiated, took action. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna do that. You gotta you know take what I mean? action to be held I'm accountable, gonna do that. or to be held at the stature of a uh, 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 icon, an idol, someone that's a role model. Role right, model. right, 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 right. But I mean, like I, I, you got my my whole thing is saying that is like a lot of those guys that 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 play overseas that are gone for ten months out of the year. It is difficult. It's difficult. Definitely. I got buddies too that play over there, and, they, and it's possible, just difficult. And your mind is thinking about so many different things. Oh man! And 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 you know maybe maybe diving in and out of depressive state, like a whole lot of things are going For on. Sure. Because while while you guys are missing one person, he's missing everybody. Mm, that's big. That's huge. You see that's what I'm huge. saying? No, that's huge. Because I mean, shout out to um, J J Lloyd, Jordan Lloyd, Shannon Scott. These these my other brothers. Um, I know a, a handful of other cats that are pros. But when I keep in contact with them and I reach out to them, it really makes me really think about like just what they're going through. Because I, when I reach out, I'm reaching out just because I have time. Like they don't have time like me. Yeah. They're traveling. They're here. They're on this flight. They're in a away game. They're doing this. And then with pro- COVID protocols, it's probably a whole, a whole different process. Now. Yeah. Depending I mean, on what country you go to. Depending on what country you go to. Different type, different forms of racism. Different forms Different of culture. Mm. People may may not speak your different language. Way. People may, you know, like there's so so many different uh, uh, road bumps that you experience overseas. Your, your check may be late. They may I, hold your passport. I've, I've heard about a situation. Living conditions could like be bad. That. That's rough. That's rough. I mean, a, a team has to pay you, though. You sign a contract, but it, like you said. I mean, I know people that's waiting on pay from years ago. Really? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they have to pay you. But I mean, like, who? what, you going to go over there and take it? We'll <laughs> right. pay you at some point, maybe. Right. Yeah. Maybe it'll fizzle out. You got to take us to court in Spain. Mm. Mexico. Yeah, that's a whole where, where, you, where your organization is probably run by people that could... Not do some animals. very, very sinister <laughs> things. Sinister. You got to take that on the chin. You got to take it to the chin, bro. You got to take it on the chin. We talk about cartel, niggas. We talk about You got to take that on the about... chin. Hey, man, you know what I mean? Like, you ain't getting paid. Definitely. It's, it's fuzzy for you. Yeah, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. What you saying? Oh, no, I'm still on business. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mama live at ah, ah, ah. Your daughter at ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Come on. What we doing? Go yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Be, be calm. Yeah, chill out. Be real smooth. Yeah, don't that. Yeah, don't don't let this. Don't let you know. what I mean, don't come on, man. Yeah. You can be the gangster, the gangster, the real of the real, man. You you gotta bow down. You gotta bow down. It's level. Or die. It's level. You gotta figure out what you're willing to do. That's what I'm saying. Set your price early. Figure out what you're willing to do and how far you're willing to go in in multiple situations. Know your boundaries. Know your boundaries. Okay. Higher lows. Higher lows. So, you did touch on the TBT for a second. I do want you to touch on it a little bit more. I haven't had the luxury of playing in it. <clears throat> I have the luxury of being around guys like you, bros like you, and a handful of other guys that I know personally that played at a high level, just mm-hmm. as such as yourself. Tell me about your experiences there, and and a lot of the, the narrative that that that's out there. The TBT is a great tournament; it's an amazing tournament. Um, but a lot of people who don't hoop or understand the bas- the game of basketball, uh, maybe like yourself or myself, um, and really what it takes to to play at a high level, um, they they might not they might not see anything above the surface as far as like damn this is really competitive. They might just see oh it's a TBT tournament on TV. Right. You get what I'm saying. So like me personally, I know there's dogs out there. Yeah, for sure. Across the whole tourney, right. competitive. It's it's for the bread. So it's ten a hundred times more competitive. A thousand. Yeah, man. So as right, far we, as the TBT go man the- goes, give me your perception of your experiences. You know, you, you just just walk me through in your shoes. What is what it felt like your first year, your second year? You know, uh, I definitely think TBT is a is a is a is a home of the brave for sure. Um, I like it's that very a lot. competitive. Um, not a lot of foul calling going on. You have to play through some foul, play South through some content. Yeah, for sure. South side yes, sir. Shit. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got to play through some contact. You have to compete. 
So the one thing that you have to understand when you're playing at TBT that a lot of teams come in there that are well, more well equipped and more talented, and they lose because well, they've the machines. A, well, because they come in and they have this pre conserved notion that's uh, equivalent to uh, new mainstream basketball, where it's like I could be cool, I can be relaxed. You know what I mean? If you can't hit me too hard, I'm gonna go to the foul line. Like I'm, I'm a smooth guy, and I'm a smooth guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, I get it. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, but if you play cool out there, you're gonna get smacked. <laughs> Bayheim's army. Bayheim's. You know what I mean? Bayheim's army. I'm a Bayheim's army. Because yeah, the nerd I mean, team came in, we were dogs. Dogs. We were dogs. We we didn't we didn't show guys on your team. So Bayheim Bayheim showed teeth. We talk about that. Oh. You you got guys you got dogs that show teeth does and you got you got you got you got dogs that bite. Okay. Now that don't get me wrong, I think the year the year before and previous years they were at a they're at a space where they're chasing that championship. That legacy. Yeah, so I think they're more so in that dog state where they're like trying to prove like, hey, look, no, we are cues. Yeah. yeah. And then they won it the year before and the year that we actually played against them. I think they were just a little more lackluster. We're playing against the nerd team. There's some nerds. We're going to blow them out. A little complacency. Um, a little lack of dog shown that game. A little more teeth than bite. A lot more teeth than bite. You know what I mean? And you don't like that if your girl's involved. You That's, know what a I'm saying? That's a fact. That's a fact. Well, you don't like it either way, I guess. Teeth nah, is bad. Nah, but um, for you, <laughs> for you ladies. <laughs> but, but, um, but what I'm saying is like, you know... Um, you get a team like that, yeah. that that is, you know, Tyler Ennis. Pro. Keem Christmas. Pro. Uh, 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 what was the point guard name that went to Mississippi State? Mm. Forget his name, but super good. Plays plays top league in Turkey. Lefty was on there Lefty. Too. CJ Fair was on CJ, there too, right? CJ Fair was on there as well. Like, really good guys. That's you know what I mean? Solid. solid guys. Not good guys. Solid. Not solid. Like, well, good guys. They're good. Yeah. Um, they're good. Yeah. But they came out. And they were complacent that game. And by them being complacent, we we got the better we got the better of them. Hit them in the mouth early. We hit them in the mouth early. Mm. And so that that's the beauty of the TBT. Right. Is one game one loss loses all the all the glory. Mm -hmm. You have to win. You have to win at single elimination. You have to win everything. If you want the glory, you can't lose. Mm -hmm. So it's like the 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 mentality and and the precision of focus has to be. Different, Definitely. you know. If you're playing in a, in a in a normal collegiate season, you fall to a a team that you're supposed to be. It's like, all right, we'll see them again. Definitely. That doesn't, you know, you might fall from rank number one to number four. It's even deep, different than the NCAA tournament because ain't no money's not the, the not the result. A ring is. You get bread. That bread can set you yeah. up. That bread can set you up. Set you up. You so invest you here, here, you, yeah, you, you here. You exactly. Here. So you know, you get a team. You get a team like. Like Buffalo, who ended up winning it, mm -hmm. um, I, this I past year? yeah, right. I won't say they they had the most talent top to bottom. That they didn't system guys. Well, well, they were disciplined. I think they held each other accountable. But I think more than anything, they just played. They played TBT way. Mm -hmm. they, the rules they, are a little different. Tell they me the rules. They under they understand they understand to to put a little more pressure. Be aggressive. Right. You know what I mean? They aren't calling fouls at, at a high clip. Be aggressive. Be be assertive. You know what I mean? Foul a little bit. Push your guy a little bit. Talk a little banter. Try to get him out of his game. Like, they understood that part of it. And that's the aspect that you have to have in a TBT to actually, like, you know, win. Be successful. Yeah, to be successful in it. And they had that. Unless you're just so talented. Definitely. You know what I mean? And so, like, you know, and, and you do have some teams that, uh, that are just so talented, talented and they have a little bit of dog or a little bit of toughness and they persevere. Some guys um, gotta adapt to that those rules, like I was saying. Though. And it's hard to pivot for guys. Yeah. Like you gotta understand, like the 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 uh, the Elam ending where you you know at the end of end of the, well four minutes left in the fourth quarter, if there's a dead ball or a foul, um, the target score is set or a timeout call. The target score is set, and it's plus eight of whatever the uh, team that has the highest point has. So let's say the score is eighty to eighty. And four minutes are on the clock. You foul. Um, well, what will happen if I'm up? I will call a timeout. And if I had possession of the ball, once I call that timeout, the target score is now 90. So at that point, the time doesn't matter, and it's the first team to 90. Mm -hmm. 
right? They take the time off the clock in this first team to 90. No, no win by two, straight up. Straight up. Straight up. And so for some people, they live for that. Oh, 100%. I mean, that's, that's dope, though. I like those rules. But some people don't. No, I like it. Though. Do so you I, like, did you like it? Yeah, I enjoy it. I think it's amazing because because it gi- it gives that excitement back to it. I think one thing that I enjoy about hockey and soccer because I watch hockey and soccer far more than Dope I watch sports. basketball, Dope and sports. I watch that because it's so hard to come across a bucket or a goal or score that when you do come by it, there there has to be so much parade and so much it's lit. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's celebration. Lit. Because, you go to a soccer game, it's lit. Yeah, but the beers in the air, everything's in the air. Like Parade. everybody's so happy, hugging celebration. Everything because it's like that one goal is is major. That's and right. so you don't get that in basketball. You get that leisure. I'm up 20 at half is whatever. Right. Um but with the TBT rules, when you hit that last shot, the celebration and the and and all that energy, positive energy, everything erupts. It's like hitting a game, a buzzer beater every time. You know what I mean? And so on top of that, a lot of guys get nervous. So I think if you're... Lights if, are bright. Yeah, lights are bright. So like bright. if you're a basketball player, an athlete, you know, I think we, especially basketball players, I'm going to talk about them specifically. We've always, we've all been in a situation where we can sit on the free throw line and make 20 in a row. Yeah. And someone goes, all right, make eight in a row right now. Miss at three. Miss at three. Miss at four. Miss at five. Get to seven. seven. Miss. Get to seven again. Miss. That hurts, Get to seven dude. again. Miss. Why? 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 Nothing, Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Except someone said, make it now. Right. Right. And so the same thing like goes into the TBT rules, right? Okay, now you it's 80 to 80, 80 to 82. You've been killing all game. Now I need it. Now, I need now it. go get it. You only got eight points. Now go get it. You scored 30. Now go get eight more. Get 38 and show me that you really like that. Why that. everybody's watching and expecting you to do it. Mm. Can you do it when I expect you to do it? Mm. It's easy to do when it's unexpected. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do when it's expected. That's, that's, that's what separates legends from good players. Mm. That's why Kobe is considered great. Fact. That's why that's why that's why MJ is considered great. Why you why you stop? Why you why you say you said look? You said look. Le who? Le. Nah. Le who? Hey. Le Earl? Uh, I'm just saying, look who, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Look what? He respects LeBron, y'all. He respects. Oh, you talking about LeBron? La. The La. The La. Him. Him. He stepped up. He. I mean, bro, just imagine if you brought a championship home to College Park. <laughs> I'll talk about it on that I mean, scale. That's different, bro. You promised him that. I don't know. Like I said, I, I like it's it's very surface level with me and, and and watching basketball to an extent to make a real judgment call, especially during that era to make a real judgment call on if I think LeBron is a. I expect you, ex- because I think if LeBron if LeBron came out tomorrow and said I'm gonna get 35 tomorrow, he might not. He probably won't. Probably. When Kobe, when 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 Larry Bird told them guys, I'm going to go get 40 and gave him 45, and Kobe Bryant said, I'm having 30 tonight. Even his last game, he said he was going to have 50. And like went and executed. And he got 60. Like, I feel I feel like had he not got 50 or 60, he would have been pissed. Definitely. I don't know, LeBron, but I feel like had he did it, it would have been laugh Like, he would have laughed it off. Like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, you know, I went out with, out with my boys and... You know, it's it's whatever. He would have lied about something funny, like yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he would have, he would have, like miss. Yeah, I'm reading the book. What 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 you like? Yeah, I'm, the preface is nice. <laughs> like the index is real dope. The cover says, oh, "You got a Malcolm X book? What did, what's in it? Teach me something. Educate me." He goes, yeah, you know, I've seen it on the internet, and it, it was a cool looking cover. No, I'm just on the index now. Why your, why your, why your, why your uh, first finger is on the 90th page? Then <laughs> he's holding the book on the 90th page, but you just in the, you just two pages into the book. You're lying. You're capping. You're lying. Oh, my God. Just call. Just say that. Call Space Spade, bro. You know, I wish he would just say, like, hey, man, like, honestly, I ain't even read this. My teammate gave me, gave me this book. I don't even know who X is. <laughs> Give me a month. Come back to me. He's crazy, man. He don't do one, that. That got me weak over here. I'm sorry, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's hard for me to believe oh, that. Now, shit. if, like, 
maybe he will, but it's hard for me to believe that he comes from that cloth that tells you what he's going to do and then goes and executes it by any means necessary. Yeah. And see, like Kobe Bryant, and it takes a different dog too because LeBron likes to be liked. That's a fact. Whereas Co- Kobe and MJ gave a damn about. So if Kobe said, I'm going to have 40, guess what? If it. it took him 80 shots he's to get 40, get, he's gonna get I'm getting 40. Regardless if my teammate likes it or not, I'm getting 40. That's a fact. That's a fact. LeBron, if it comes at the sacrifice of his teammates liking him, he's getting 12. Is, is he the one more guy? He can, he can be, for he can sure. Be. Penetrate this guy? Good play guy. Good play guy. He's a good play guy. Like, I'm going to tell you another guy who I think, if he said I'm going to get 30, he goes and get 30. Oh, give me one. Gil. Oh, man. Gil stands on this. Vote for Gil. Vote for Gil. Shout out Gilbert Arenas, man. He was he was a talent. Honestly, he I feel like his skill set was beyond his years for the era he was in. Yeah, he was in the wrong era. He was doing some shit that niggas. He was in the wrong era. He was in the wrong era. Your boy, your boy took a lot of this era. I'm I'm gonna gonna tell you who took a lot of his shit. Who? James. Harden, Harding. Oh, for sure. They took a lot of his shit. For sure. Yeah, I, like I, like I like that. I like that. If you go look at him clip like by that. clip, I like you'll that. see a lot of Gil and in, in Harden. So what I'm saying is like, I think if Kobe was in a TBT, mm. Gil was in a TBT, mm. MJ was in a TBT in a space where it's like, oh, we have a target score. I need eight points. He'll thrive. They they damn near giving you giving you seven out of eight. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Hey man, y'all don't have it. Y'all don't. They may not score the whole game. Those last eight, all that's going through them. Right. LeBron, on the other hand, is a deferred guy in those last eight. All the time. Yeah, he'll get you two maybe. If he's hot downhill, I'm gonna tell you how he would get his get his buckets. How I would assume, in my opinion, fast break dunk. <laughs> Why you start with the fast break? Dunk? Fast break dunk. To the Baja from the top of the key. Definitely. One step in front of the half court, Definitely. downhill, fast as he can. Freight train. Free throw line. Yeah. Fuck around, missed the shot. Um, some some bullshit <laughs> turnaround three with time running out. I mean, like, <clears throat> we looked at buzzer beater shot or executed in the last 10 years. Arguably the greatest player of our era. Oh, that video we watched the other day, right? Arguably the greatest player of our era. Right, right. Only had two clips in about 20 minute span. That seemed like they were solid buzzer beaters. No, 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 no. No. All of his buzzer beaters were last few seconds of the clock. I turn around, I throw up some shit that. Catch a shoot shit. No, no. I throw, I spin, I throw it up. And if I miss it, I can at least say I was in a difficult position. I threw up the bat. We we rarely see him get the ball down one. 15 seconds on the shot clock. I got the ball at the top of the key. One four flat me. That's get out the way. Clear me aside. Me. I'm taking this shot guaranteed. Right. Right. Everybody move. We're gonna live with that. If we lose, we lose. I'm taking this shot. Are you dumb? Right. LeBron. Very rarely have we ever seen him do that. Kyrie, we've seen do it. Steph, we've seen do it. We've seen Ky- we've seen LeBron do it though, just not enough. We've we I said rarely have we seen That's out of the fifteen That's plus years he's been in the league. That's correct. We we can count on our fingers. That's correct. Eighty plus games a year. He'll rather defer and give it to Anthony Davis on the wing for a pigeon you know pigeon toe three. Then go, man, nah, 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 nah. I'm a rock a bye rock. Ha. And I'm going to live with that because that's just not him. And that's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying, like, in a TBT setting, yeah, he will be a force just because, like, he can handle the physicality. Right. Like, he's dominant. Don't it's get me not, wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm saying is, like, sure. yeah, yeah, what I'm saying is, like, if he was in a TBT setting with NBA players on the floor, he wouldn't have he he wouldn't be the guy that he go get go get you the eight points. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't think he would ever score eight. I don't, I wouldn't say that. I would say he would score eight. And no eight and the team. No, I don't think he would ever give you eight. I think Ron eight. Would, I, eight. Ron could give you eight. No, I don't think he would. Ron though. could give you eight. What he could do and what he cons- will do. I'm not saying consistent. I think what he but, could do and what he will do is two different things though. But he's gotta, capable. He's capable. He's capable. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so so that's so really, that's really what I'm at. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So riddle me this. Yeah. You buy a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, I'm Listen, here, you buy a pit bull because you know I like this shit. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. buy a pit bull. You take him to a trainer. Okay. He hits. He hit. You know they got the little thing. He hits the arm bar. Yeah. The trainer sh- tells him he has. He has the strongest. <laughs> has the strongest bike. He has the strongest bike that he's ever felt in his entire life. He's a beast. He's an animal. Mind you, somebody robs your house. Comes in your home. Dog does shit all. Does nothing. Panic. Shows his teeth, barks, panics, runs to the shit. <laughs> Just because you're capable of protecting my house doesn't mean you protect my house. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's LeBron. He's capable. But he's cap- Don't get me wrong. He has the meanest bite. He has the <laughs> best, best build. The physique. But there's a chihuahua that's biting. <laughs> and I'd much rather take the chihuahua that bites no, sure. than a pit bull that runs. Right. Definitely. Capability and execution are two two different two different things. They're too far wide. You're right. He has the make and model of a Porsche. Say or the capability and execution are two different things. Yeah, they're too they're that's too widespread. Huge. That's huge. Yeah, they're too that's widespread. A fact, though. Yeah, that's a bar. Capability and execution are two. In New Yorkers things. like to say that's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bar. Oh, that's a bar. <laughs> Shout out to my New York boys. You know what I'm though. saying? So, since we since we taking a shift, I got about like. I got 12 minutes on my timer, but, you know, we'll, 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 we ain't going to go past that, fellas. Shout out to Don. Shout out my fam. You know, shout out my boy, Don fam. Shout out to Crandall on the cut. Shout out to Ray. Um, Crandall sleep. That nigga narcolepsy. <laughs> 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 so let me go ahead and, um, you know, wrap it up with a couple things that we can get touch on. So the game, you know, the game with the word or phrase, and you tell me, your thoughts, initial thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's a word or a phrase, we're going to do that. Then we're going to end off with shout outs. We're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, and, and we're going to chop up at the, about the mob. We're going to get we gonna get into that a little bit deeper. Let's start, let's start on that before we get to the game. So before we get to the to the wrap-up wrap-up, explain the mob to the people, to the world who don't understand the mob. Explain the the mission behind the movement, the, uh, the importance to you. Right. What everything means. So the mob stands for the meaning of basketball. Some people say it's mind over body. I got people. He that got say, merch, baby. Yeah, say it's the, hard too. The, the, you can rock it with the Jays. You can do whatever you want to do with it. It's tough. <laughs> no, I'm dead ass. I'm a shoe guy. Say I need some shit to put on. It's all facts. Um, for me, it means the meaning of basketball. You ask April Sykes, she'll tell you. You know, what I mean, some you know, completely different. Shout out to April Sykes, sis, big sis. Shout out um, to April. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's definitely been taking a name of its own. So we, who, you know, we give it to the eyes beholder. But for me, it's the meaning of basketball. And basically, what we want to do is start to continue to carve out an ecosystem for mm. uh, multiple people to thrive mm-hmm. in their own space and collectively. Man. Uh, we do free clinics for kids, mm. um, basketball clinics. We do turkey Nick's drives. Not doing this. Um, we do podcast we do i mean like we 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 got some stuff cooking as far as like some summer stuff we're doing the aau team coming up so i mean like we're we're basically um we're basically bringing a lot of creative individuals creative basketball individuals and outside of that realm and we're bringing them together we're going like hey look we're going to create an ecosystem and infrastructure that works that we think is good for the youth and for the community because we keep seeing um platforms or we keep being a part of platforms that we don't appreciate. Mm. Um like and that. it's and it's hard to hard to um sp- you can speak poorly on a platform, but it, to me it's also it's also a, a double edged sword because like I can speak poorly on, on on your platform but I don't know what you're going through. For sure. I don't know what your infrastructure is. I don't know what your at cost is. I don't know what your daily traumas are. I don't know what you're going through at home. So it's hard for me to judge you. So in order, in, instead of me judging you, I said, why don't we build our own platforms and we create the infrastructure that we want? And then from there, we attract the people that like what we're producing. Right. You know that, what I mean? Like we the status quo that fit yeah, the culture. Yeah. It's like if we don't like how a trainer's training, like how long are you going to complain about that trainer training? How about you start training the kids? Mm, I like that. Take initiative. Take initiative because what comes with that is the good, but it comes the ugly too. Because yeah. somebody's not going to like your training. For sure. For sure. And can you take that? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, boom. Like, if you have an AU t- team, you might not like how your AU team treated you or how they're treating your son. That's fine. Start your own. 
And now by you being now now by it being yours, you you have to tackle the the the, the talks with the parents that think their child is the next LeBron and MJ. Uh, you have to you have to tackle the kid that throws a chair. You have to tackle the kid. You know what I mean? You have to tackle driving these kids home every day. And one lives in Decatur, one lives in College Park, and one lives in Gwinnett. You have to tackle that responsibility now. But at that time, you can at least say, "It's mine." It's going to go on. The ship is going to go in the direction that I want it to. Most definitely. See, when you're a part of a platform, you can whisper. But a lot of time, when you're whispering on a boat, it your words just get caught in the wind and the breeze. That was a bar. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like that. That that's the whole thing. So you know, I you know uh, me and uh, you know my friends or my family. I consider them family because of that's you know true. if we ain't family, we ain't nothing. We ain't shit. Um, and like I said earlier, you know what I'm saying? Circle smaller than Cheerio, stronger than Vibranium. You know what I'm saying? So you like, you think he Benny the Butcher? Today, right? <laughs> he, he's giving up bars. We so, was listening pre pre episode to some bars. Benny so, is okay. I can't. I don't. I can't understand him. He speaks a different language to me. But besides that, um, possibly I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but besides besides that, um, you know. I was I, I seen like we talked about earlier. I seen God aligning me with people like yourself, like I, April Sykes, like like Gutter, or, or you know, Shout like Gutter, man. like like Lil Akil from HBN, like you know what I mean, like Shout Beans from TWB, like like God started aligning me with with these people because we all have been a part of infrastructure that we seen flaws in mm. and that we wanted to make adjustments to, or that we may even been vocal about these adjustments, but since it wasn't our platform. It got our our words got I got drifted out to the wind and and true. yeah and just drifted off to the sea. But see now, all of us are coming together as collectively, and now we create our own ecosystem, our own platform. That's rare too. And that and then when you do that, then we can you know what I mean. Then we can move the needle in the direction, or we we can we can we can steer the boat in the direction that we see fit. Most definitely. And whether that's a good direction or bad, we don't know yet. Definitely. But I can tell you this: the mob's coming. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Straight for shooters sure. coming. For sure. GU hoops coming. For sure. Slush Pro runs coming. For sure. HBN's coming. Like we for coming. Sure. And we sure. coming together. And that, that's Man. the beauty of it. That's is tough. that we're coming as a unit and yeah. like there's no there's no ego involved. Mm. Like so many people, like we mm. we've all we've all been humbled in our life. Mm. Whether it be myself, like being a top lottery pick to to go on undraft, you know, to 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 not doing it. You know what I mean? Like we've all like seen you being a a, a stellar player. That's a fact. Being cap- more than capable of playing overseas, for sure, and that not having the opportunity. He vouched for me. I was a fucking bucket. He was a bucket. You know what I mean? Slush and some of the things that she that she's battled. You know what I mean? Gutter and some of the things that he's battled. A kill and stuff that he's battled. So like we've all like been a. Uh, I'm not gonna say a victim, but we we've, we've all like seen the other side of the coin. Mm-hmm. So for us to come together, that's huge. like man, it's just gonna be beautiful. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Like you said, the ego part is the biggest thing, bro. Our humility is so high. Yeah, because we've been humbled. Life's yeah. humbled us. That's a fact. And now we come together collectively, and we're going to make something aesthetically pleasing. Like, I think a long time ago, he said, you know what I mean? My, my retaliation is going to be artful. My my, 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 my retaliation is going, is going to be creative and full of art and full of beauty and full of aesthetically pleasing things. Like, when we come back on the scene, it's going to be beautiful. It's not going to be painful, and it's not going to be war. It's gonna be beautiful. Like what we're doing is beautiful. Look at this. Man. This is beauty. Man. Like your pay, like your your retaliation to what they did okay. is beautiful. Okay. It ain't guns and violence. It's tough. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's tougher hard. than that. It's tougher than that. It's nice. It looks good. No, factual. It's aesthetically pleasing. No, facts. And and shout out to the mob again, because you know, I'm an affiliate. I'm a part of the mob. We come in, straight shooters collab every time. It's here. Like guys not talking. As genuine and raw and unfiltered as we talking, I mean, sure there are other there are other places you can go where niggas is chasing views and niggas is chasing this. Niggas is talking real, so either you rock with it or you don't. You get left or get right. <laughs> one of the two. It's only a two the two options. Right. So you know it's, it's one of the two. But you know to wrap things up, shout out to the mob again. Uh, to wrap things up, we can play this game. Um, got about four ish, four or five minutes. Um, we gonna do a word. Or a phrase, and you're gonna tell me your initial thoughts on that word or phrase, right? Ah. We're gonna start with the word loyalty. What does that word bring to your mind? Necessary. Hmm. 
It don't have to be one word, but you can oh. you can elaborate. Yeah, that's I can stand on that. No, you can stand on that. That's I like. I mean, really, that's simple. Yeah, Simplicity yeah, yeah. Is, I, yeah. is key. With this when you said one word, I, you know what I mean. That 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 forced me to be a little creative. So loyalty is necessary. Okay, okay, okay. We are gonna do that. Um, if we are gonna do one word for sure. Please. I can I can I can switch that, but for that first no, one, yeah, for the first one, you have necessary. to go with that. Sure. Necessary. Okay. okay. This phrase is King City Classic. Easy. <laughs> and y'all go back and research on YouTube, King City Classic and Jalon Kendrick in one name. You're going to see why I said that. Go back and look the clip up. Take a pause at this and go back and take a look at that. Because that was the first time I seen him really look at a guy and look him. I said, oh, wow. He banged on him, dunked on him, looked down at him like he was nothing. It was crazy. Shit went viral. Look it up. That was Kyrie, too. That was Reed? Yeah, that was Kyrie. No. That was Kyrie Irving. And all, yeah, and the crazy thing is, the only reason hey, I banged it, Kai, Yeah, the only Kai, reason I banged on tough, him, son. I'm telling you, the only reason I banged on him, he was on is, yeah, before the game, he was like, yo, why is this guy ranked in front of me? So when I went up, I seen who it was. Like, you see me. You lay, you were I going. Went, I was going You were jelly. going for the filet. I went jelly. He was going for the filet. I went jelly. He went him, him, him. I seen, I seen what the bread was. <laughs> went jam. You feel me? I was going jelly scene. Oh, jam. <laughs> Don't play with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no kidding. I like that. I like that, man. All right, cool. That was good. So uh, I, I kind of combine these two words in a sense, but influence slash impact. As like, what does those words mean? What or those, or, what or are, what who, those, who has that? No, what do those words mean? Well, just just your, your, your initial thoughts. Like, it doesn't have to be... Well, I mean, like, I like for me, I have to separate like that question because influence and impact can be like, like I would say, if we were talking about a person, I would say Muhammad Ali. But if you're saying like how those words resonate with me, that's separate. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Mm, how does influence and impact resonate with me? To, those words, uh. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. It's a tough one. Like I think influence and impact is um, it's tedious. You have to be cautious with it because when you have influence and you have impact, mm. that doesn't mean you're influential in a positive way. That doesn't mean you impact in a positive way. We have rappers, we have individuals that can impact our community that have a lot of influence in a very negative way. They can go on online and, and and boast and brag about a lifestyle that they uh, have never been a part of, but they've been somewhat associated with it um, or affiliated with it. Like, you know, we can have a rapper that talks about selling drugs or killing people that has never done either, but he's seen it to some degree. So now he goes on Hoping a- around it. Yeah. So he, now he goes on a, on a, and, and becomes influential or impactful and he speaks about it as if he himself did it. And now you have uh, the youth chasing, you know what I mean? Thinking that that's the route that they have to go. Like, oh, I need to be off the beans or the zans or off sure. the walk, For you know, sure. in order to rap. For sure. Um, and that ain't even what they was on. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I have sure. to kill a nigga and go to jail to be respected. And that ain't even what the person that you're listening to was on. Yeah. So it's like, um, you know, being influential and being impactful come is is comes with a great responsibility, mm -hmm. and I will hope that people that have influence and have impact um, take account for their community and how they're moving the needle for their community. And I will hope that they move it in a positive light. And that goes for even people, you know, what I mean, like myself or, or other people that where 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 it's like, oh, I'm just talking about where I came from mm -hmm. and what I know. And it's like that's one thing, but that's that is different from you for you now. Like, yeah, you came from that, but like, 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 I, I stopped listening to Meek Mill because it's like, my nigga, you worth M's. You still selling crack and shoot niggas? Right. Like, bro, like, when are you going to talk about the money you making? Like, Rick, Ricky Rose, I don't know what he did past life to say it was a correction officer. I don't know, but like, he talks about what? Money, man. I'm getting paper. Jay Z, too. I'm getting paid. You know what I mean? So, like, Drake. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, and, and I don't know if they're, they're a catalyst for, you know, most impactful, influential, and how they do things are, are, are peachy. But I'm just saying, like, you know, there, there has to be some type of transition to where, like, when you know better, you should start to do better. And so, like, 
that that that's my flaw with these impactful and influential people is that when they start to know better, they still they still they still have strings attached to them, and they still are pushing a narrative that is no longer their reality. Mm. But it's a narrative that is a reality for a young kid. It's a narrative that's marketable. Too. It's marketable, and it's a narrative for and 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 it's marketable, and it's um. You can monetize it. Mm-hmm. I can monetize violence. Mm-hmm. I can monetize the 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 influx of spending on 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 designers. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you monetize uh, uh, a rapper giving back and being positive and talking about the beauty? Like, it's not my. The people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear bad that. news sells. Bad news sells, and it sells fast. We know that. That's the you that's, know. What I mean, that's a bar. It's too. Unfortunate. Bad news sells a hundred percent facts, whether it's true or not. Yeah, whether so, it's true or not. That's what I think about influential and impactful. For sure. So this is the last one. Fuck right it here. if you don't use it right. Fuck Facts. you if you don't use it right. Facts. You're 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 scum if Facts. you don't use your impact and your influence right. That's a fact. You can come to Atlanta and we can get in the ring and do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll your dog, bro. Yeah, because I mean, I can't go toe to toe. Some of these people, money is different. I can't go toe to toe with no violence. But we can go mano y mano. Right, right. We can, we can do some punching. Right, we can get yeah, 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 yeah. We can do real comedy. You know, yeah, real I can do that. Not Me and you, mano y mano. Yeah, not the, not the yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can get busy. You know, a lot of these guys can't fight. They yeah. got strap, rip. J E L A N K N D R C K. That's my Instagram if you want to set that up. <laughs> All right, we're going to touch on this last topic. I'm going to do some shout-outs we're going to get out of here. Um, this phrase is... is, is I, I want to know how you feel about this game. Wheeler versus Walton game at Wheeler 2010. When you had when you had the team you had. Mm-hmm. Thoughts. Because I'll pull back the game. Just the game. Uh-huh. Because that if you, if you go on YouTube right now, mm-hmm. you can look that game up. Yeah. And they will show the stats. Mm-hmm. You the top score on the one side. Who was the other one? Ryan, for sure. Exactly. All right. So, so give me your experience on that game rundown. How 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 crazy that game was. The hype behind it, and how locked in you were. Like, okay, I, I, I'll give you. I'll give you my one word: laughable. They had they they didn't they didn't deserve to be on the floor with us. They were laughable. They had they had a guy that was that was that was uh, special. Ryan Harrell. Was special. He was very special. Shot and they had, they had some other players that were, that were pretty good. Glenn was gone at that year. Yeah, yeah. it had Michi. He yeah, you know, he was, he was he was he was he was solid. Michi, Glenn Rice brother. Um yeah, he was But solid. yeah, that was that was a laughable game for me. Like I I knew. So Ryan Harrell beat me when, when we was in rec ball. Walk Walk versus Birdette. We were I don't know, 8 and under, 9 and under. I'm not sure. We're we're fairly young. We're up two. He comes down, hits a three at the volleyball line. Volleyball? Yeah, deep volleyball ball? on deep ball. Hits it. They win at the buzzer. He goes crazy. And I vouched from that day, like, this kid will never beat me again. And he never did. So, like, every time I played against him, like, it was, it was, I knew. Is it what time it was? Yeah, like, you're not beating me. I ain't going to lie to you. That was personal for you. Man. Yeah, yeah, it was personal, but it was, like, a personal thing for me when I was nine. I didn't even think about, like, you know how you make a statement, you write down something, you're like, yo, that actually came true. Yeah. It was, like, a, a, a some sort of a manifestation. It's like, you're not beating me. Right. Ever again. And it's just, I never thought about it again. It's just what it was. So when I played against him, I just knew, like, this is a guaranteed win. Definitely. Like, he can have a good game. It's a guaranteed win. I think um, he, so, he ended up with, like, 27, 28. He had, like, maybe 29, 30. Only yeah, he had, he had, had 30. to do that. Well, he plus 30, he played 32. more minutes. I was, more minutes. Yeah, I was able to relax. Yeah, you were able to relax. Last six, seven he minutes of the game. Mm, did I? You did. I was, I, you know, I don't. I like that. Bro, you I don't, don't give I that. Had, I like that team, bro. I like it. I it may not have been that. as good I as, the, as the old Wheeler with R. I'm just saying, what, I, what, I, what, Owl, what I'm saying is, I had, I had an okay Jones. team. That had, I had an okay that team. team. was tough. No, they wasn't. Y'all, you made them tough. So what do you mean? <sighs> what do you mean? That's just like you said. You went, come on, bro. We you weren't was, tough. Y'all were good enough. We're competitive. We're Top competitive. Five in the state. That's not we're tough. Com- yeah, we're competitive. That's we weren't tough. tough. We weren't tough. No, we weren't tough. No, y'all were solid. We're okay. Okay. We made a we 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 did a lot. We we achieved, we overachieved for what we had. Right. I had a young KK who was a great shooter, but he was young. For sure. I had a young Carl Cochran. For sure. End up being really good, but he was young. Yeah, he did. Um, I had a I had a ninth grade Charles Mitchell right. who ended up developing to a hell of a player. He did. He was young. Yeah. I had Joey Jerome who was a great glue guy, Third great guy. Draymond guy. You know what I mean? Had a shifty cross, get to the bucket, dunk a little, um, bit. Dunk a little bit. I had a Phil Taylor had who was seasoned. But I mean, like, let's just call Everybody, it. Fr- did you? It was it was hard for his senior year, I think, to to give to give to understand that hey, look, this team don't really belong to me. Right. 
It belongs to Jalon. He's been waiting for that his whole career. He's been waiting on it to be his team his whole career. Because he, and then when it was supposed to be his team, they didn't wasn't. surround him by by quality. But, well, me, but other than me, like he had been around he had been around like five, you know, five guys that would be considered top players in the state in the country. country. For four years, and then four his 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 year, right. his prime year, right. he only had me, right. and he had Joe. You know, he had Joey, which was solid, but like no knock to Joey, but it's like he was used to having Daquan Jones, J.J. Hickson, Ari Stewart, Taj Richard Howe, Taj Tate. Like those guys were were along, alongside him during during his his ninth grade year, all the way to his senior year. To his credit, then his he senior well year with those hot with those upperclassmen. Though. Yeah, to his yeah. credit. To yeah, his credit. then his senior year comes, and now it's me and Jalon. Instead right. of me, Jalon, this kid, this kid, this kid, this kid, this kid, and we can go anywhere and be a top ten team in the country at a drop of a dime, like he had experienced in his adolescent years. How, how was the vibe? Were you one and two? Was it one and two? Well, how was Lip playing it? Was he saying, "Okay, Jalon's one first one option," and and Phil, you just fill in? No, so what, like I got he, how, no. What's, what's Lip's? What's Lip's Scott style? Tell me that. I don't know because I got like a watered down lip. Like mm. I said, we didn't have to go baldy like like the like the like the guys before us. Coach like he, shit. yeah, like he had just. He, I think he lost his. He lost now. Nah, he yeah, he lost his way a little bit. He lost his accountability, his discipline tactics that he had, and he started to kind of like seek out like this. You know, these players that had notoriety. Mm. See me, I needed structure. Right. I was young and I was off the porch. I needed somebody that could sit me down and hold me accountable because I knew accountability was the truth. Because I knew, hey, look. This is red and this is green. Don't go to red. If you go to green, we're good. If you ever go to red, anybody ever goes to red, it's bad. Like when you start to blur the lines for me, I tiptoe everywhere. I'll try anybody. And see, that was the difference. Like you could be, you could be a giant. Like if I like I, I stood on business. I didn't care how big you are, where you came from, what you had on you. If we were gonna get if we we're gonna go left, we we're gonna go left. <laughs> Nothing mattered at that point. See, some guys get big when people are small. and get small when people are big. Factual. I'm the same size. Right. Period. Right. And I'm a stepper. That's big right. on the earth. You know what I mean? So, like, you know what I mean? So, like, when you when you let the lines blur, I I, I, I didn't succeed in that space. I, I, I didn't succeed in that space. You know what I mean? I was young. I was trying to figure things out. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, adolescence, it, it forced you to do that. Like I said, like, you know, I didn't come from a family that was, you know, in a basketball world like that. My dad was figuring it out on the go. Everybody was around me was we was figuring it out on the go. My top, I'm considered one of the best players to ever come from College Park. Probably the best player to For ever sure. come from College. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? So it's like, who's teaching me? How are you teach? People are looking up to me that I looked up to. Mm-hmm. When I was ten, I'm sixteen. They're looking up to me. Mm-hmm. They 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 count their pockets on me. I'm. I've become people crutches. Games used to be deep, man. Yeah, I've become. I've become the people crutches. They he, lean on me he now. Brought College Park to Cobb County. Yeah, for sure. They that used to show crazy. out. They used to show out. That just lets you know. You know what I mean? When your city behind you. That's a fact. When your city behind you is. It's, it's what scary. that is? It's a march. A that's, that's, that, that's a stepper. <laughs> 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 hey, we, we got wrapping up on that one, man. Let me go ahead and say shout out to everybody who's been, you know, a part of this process. All my family and friends. My lady, my brother, my blood brother, just a uh, shout out to y'all for um, being like my closest, like uh, real, like hands on team uh, that I actually might have. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I appreciate y'all. Shout out to my parents. Shout out to, you know, my brothers, you know what I'm saying, that helped me out. Uh, shout out to everybody who's solid that's been around me that's consistently solid. Um, not, not no in and out hopscotch. You know what I'm saying? We don't deal with hopscotch. Um, but, you know, uh, just wanted to go ahead and touch on that. Shout out to, uh, you know, the mob team, the family chop shop. Uh, you'll see a lot of episodes and collab episodes. The family chop shop is definitely a dope vibe. You might get a little bit more content at times than, than you would expect because it's just so raw, such as my myself and, and Jalon right here. We're just raw people, so you're going to get raw. Um, but, you know, shout out to the chop shop. Shout out to the mob. Um, shout out to Apex Soul again and back in the day. For allowing this to be possible. Uh, shout out to Don, my boy Don, the camera guy. Appreciate you. Uh, he's been coming through for me. So I shout out to him and, and his and his help right here. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, man, uh, just wanted to, to go ahead and wrap it up with that. And 
I uh, just look forward to the next episode. I appreciate my brother, my fam. We stand on business. We're standards. We're, we're what, what do you say? What do we mm. say? Separate. No, we say uh, standing on business worldwide. Yeah, but there was another one we said the other day. What we say? You said. Oh, uh, uh, I just be saying shit. business standards. Business standards. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we. That's what we are. We're business standards. We not. We not perfect. We have flaws, man. We when we say standing on business. That don't mean we perfect. That just means we stand behind what we believe and we stand behind our word. We follow through on shit we say. It might not be right away every time because sometimes shit happens and it's unexpected. But guess what? It's going to happen. If we say it's going to happen and we're mm-hmm. going to do it, we're going to follow through. And that's what real standing on business, that's what real yeah. business standards do. It's, it's being imperfect and, and, and but in, acknowledging it. 100%. 100%. Being real about it. You know what I mean? Being imperfect, but acknowledging it. When you stand on business, you're not perfect. You're imperfect, but you acknowledge it. Man, I, that's my shortcoming. That's a fact. And you hold you hold the people around you that stand on business to a certain certain level of accountability. Level. Yeah. There's success in that, man. So Facts. You'll see us together a long time, you know what I'm saying? Collabing on his shit, on my shit. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that, you know, we have the 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 actual things we need so y'all can tune in to the shop shop and tune in to straight shooters collabs everything um just stay tuned and just be ready for for everything coming and have your popcorn and i appreciate y'all for listening and viewing um it's been real um yeah we out of here for sure i appreciate straight that. shooters podcast but the culture is who i am too let's get straight to it